Mm. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Steve Park, first one in. Sava Dimitrov. Sava Dimitrov. We and uh, Juve, late of Germany, currently residing in uh, Washington State. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode. I see the boss is in. Jim at the Record Collector News. This is uh, a new magazine. Well, it's not a new magazine, but I mean, the new issue is out, but this is a mu a magazine available in uh, fine record stores everywhere. This is the last issue uh, that came out January uh, and February is celebrating the Beatles. You know, here they are, right? Yeah, the Beatles, you know, yesterday and today you heard the papers, you know, you'll be twice entertained, you know, all that. Ed Sullivan. Record Collector News is an incredible issue. The new one, dare I say, may even be better. It's, uh, it's. I've, I've already, I've, I'm privileged to see some advanced copies on this stuff. And uh, the latest issue's got uh, some good articles in it. A really, uh, a very revealing, insightful article on The Doors. Uh, good morning, Nick Fantasy. Okay, uh, no, it's not happening. That never happened. I just resubscribed Record Collector News. It's a great magazine. Thank you for that, Matt. Matt, you're incredible. You're such a great support for everybody. What did you post yesterday? You posted something I commented on. You done something that I say, hey, this is good. Anyway, I got I had to go grab some records, so I got my records here. Uh what's happening, Jim? I forgot to feature the magazine and video I recorded yesterday. Oops. Well, you can do it next time. Mm. All right, all right. So today's title, to title today's show. Um so this group, I want to, I want to champion and maybe uh, bring a little uh, focus on a Canadian group known as the Surfridge Jets. It's an all gal group focusing. They focus mind games. Mind games is my favorite. Plastic Ono Band is the best. Okay, so there's. Isn't that an interesting answer, Marcella? Welcome, lovely Marcella. We are discussing. The Surfragettes today. Surf, I called it, i done a play on words. I called it Surfragette City. Remember the Bowie song, right? Surfragette City. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Whoa. <laughs> that was great. Bowie's great. But this is nothing to do with Bowie. It's just I had to do something with the title. Surfragettes. Surfragette City. I said a Surfragette City. Here's their album. This is their debut. I got the Candy Floss version. Debut LP. This came out in 2022. Extra Hold, Super Fidelity. Kind of cute the way they did that there. They are Insta They are. I just followed them on Instagram, Matt. I just followed them. I want my, I want my boy. Okay, hang on. Let's go bring around so we you know got a more of an aesthetic maybe maybe extra hold this is fun this i want to i want to champion this little band for a while the little band that could they hailed from toronto ontario canada and so i follow them i just followed them on instagram maybe wouldn't that be something if i'd be lucky enough to get one of the surfer jets they're touring in may they start touring in May. They've got all their dates. They're all, they're going to be in Florida and Texas, New Jersey. And they're going to be in England. They're going to be in England towards the uh, fall, the uh, the upcoming fall. Anyway, I don't want to cover up the little lady's face there. There you go. Roller Fink. The name of the album is Roller Fink. Really good stuff. Covers of some familiar songs. They do some, you know, like, uh, I wouldn't say they're originals. I don't know enough about them. But Roxy Roller from uh, Victoria's own, uh, Nick Gilder, well, Vancouver's own, but he hung out in Victoria too, and the island. Heart of Glass, Blondie's Heart of Glass, Train Kept a Rolling, the great Johnny Burnett song. Uh, she Loves You, yeah, 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 and it is that one, She, she Loves You. But it's all surf vibe, and they're good. Cool cover. I'm from Toronto. Local bands that play the bars. Yeah, Rick, you want to check this out. You want to check these ladies out. If they're playing locally 
and give them some support. I certainly would. Uh, they are very good. So, uh, Roxy Roller, I just started laughing. I go, holy crap, it's Roxy Roller. Uh, they did Surfer Slide. But, yeah, the, it's the, some of the covers are just great. And the album is all done up. This is the back of it. This is all, you know, it's done up and all that kind of rock and roll schmaz, schmaz from an earlier time. Look at that high tide. Look at that huh? high tide recordings, like all that uh, 50s font. Focus camera. Well, this one is like I'm on a drunk here or something. Anyway, and of course, this debut album. So you can get this thing. I just picked it up on really a blind buy. I knew I knew basically who the girls were because I've seen them on YouTube. Uh, so they're very good. And uh, surf music, if you like surf. And I do. I, I've got some Ventures albums in my collection. And, uh, but uh, yeah, they're very good, actually. And uh, the instrumental, the, you know, the instrumentation is top tier. Okay. Uh, Rach, some exciting news. I won the Plaid Records $50 gift certificate from Beer, Beer and Vinyls contest yesterday. Well, I think this is absolutely fantastic. Rachel, do you like Pink Floyd? I do like Pink Floyd. I've got everything but the Endless River, a momentary lapse of reason, and uh, the final cut. Those three I don't have in my collection. Everything else from the main studio output I've got. You serve Rach? I sure do. Sure do. When I'm down, this is the thing I've been pl I've been pl uh, practicing up at Long Beach. We've got a place called Long Beach uh, in Victoria, down Victoria. Long Beach, and you can also, uh, uh, there's a place up in the, up the other, Tofino. A lot of people serve Tofino. And uh, so I serve, and I'm all getting in shape, so when I go see Rob, why no final cut? Well, Marcello, now you know the answer that even before. Why? Why? I'm telling you. I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why. No, I'm not. I'm singing a song. <laughs> um, why no final cut? I've heard that it's just kind of a Roger Walters kind of solo effort with the poor, you know, remainers of the band kind of towing. Oh, come on, get in line, you wankers. And then they all, okay, you know, Roger. And so it was kind of like that. The final cut is great. All right, I'll get the final cut, you sons of bitches. Boy, oh, boy. As he can film Rachel and Sue surfing. Sue doesn't surf. I surf. Sue's just my surfer girl. Woo, 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 woo. Dang on. I've, got, I've done my research. I need you to tell me, uh, Luann, the name of Luann's mom and dad. Text me. Text me your mom and dad's name. I've, she's my ninth cousin. She's my ninth cousin, Dagon. I've got, I found her grandparents, so I got her grandparents. So I took it all the way back, and then I found the connecting point with my line. And so it's like my eighth great grandmother or my ninth great grandmother, <laughs> uh, or yeah, the sister, the sister of my like ninth great. It's very crazy, but I've got it all there. The final cut is good, Rachel. My first Floyd record was when it came out. Metal, the dark side took it to another level, obviously. Yes, obviously. Roller Fink. Yeah, I got the album, man. That's what we're talking about, the Roller Fink. Isn't that great? I mean, of course, Fink, Rat Fink, right? The Rat Fink, uh, Big Daddy Roth, and the fat Rat Fink of the surf culture in Southern California. Rat Fink. My cousin drew me a Rat Fink because he was into all those car magazines. God bless him. God rest him. My cousin's uh, now passed on, sadly. I liked him. I looked up to him a lot. He was an older cousin, right? So he was cool. And he had that 60s hairdo that they had back then. A light brown hair he had. You know, this is adoptive. You know, I'm adoptive, so this is on my adoptive side. But uh, it turns out uh, I'm, uh, I'm a genetic cousin to Mrs. Dagon. So, uh, yeah, get me, text me that, Dagon, John. Text me, boy. I want to know her mom and dad so I can put her in. I'm putting, I'm adding 
your your uh, your better half to my family tree. I just followed her direct line down. Just her parent. I didn't do aunts, uncles, because this was so far back. You know, you, we're going to sixteen hundreds. Dagon Studios, if that's your real name, you're alive. Coverly Numb is a top ten song of all time. Well, it's a pretty damn good song. I held my hands felt like two balloons. I love that line in that, you know, uh, uh, have another, uh, oh yeah, you'll feel a little pinprick. <laughs> I, I love that. The, the whole thing is such a stone, you know, I have become comfortably numb. Um, good morning, bat fink. Yeah, the little bat fink. That was a thing, bat fink. That's from the old uh, uh, DC comics, detective comics. So you have Batman, Robin. There was Mr. Mixtoplex for Superman. He had Mr. Plexoplex. And he was a little dwarf type creature, a little elf, a little a little imp. Imp. He was an imp from another dimension. And the only way, and he was annoying as hell. Annoying as hell. And the only way to get rid of him was if you could say his name backwards. So Mr. Plixoplick became a Plixoplick. And uh, Superman would have to deal with that guy, Mr. Plixoplick. He was very troublesome. He had magical power. The His opposite number was Batfink. And the Batfink was uh, a troublesome little imp that Batman had to deal with. You're practically sister, sisters. That's what I'm saying. Well, listen. Now, here's the thing, though. Her, uh, let me go look, because there's another name that popped up. This is just through her, the Fortier line, Fortier, Fortier. But, uh, and that's, uh, okay, but somewhere in here, Ancon, there's a Cote as well. There's a Cote. And I got a lot of Cotes in the in the closet. <laughs> I got a lot of Cotes too. Uh, oh, what is this? Denis Saint Lapierre. Dit la pied. Uh, but anyway, oh, Leclerc, there it is. Who is she? Uh, profile. Here's the connecting point. Yeah, my seventh great grand aunt. My seventh great grand aunt is Anne Catherine Leclerc. And she married P Pierre Noel Fortier. He was born in 1686, died 1730. Uh, she died, uh, she was born in 1691, so she was younger. He was 86, she was born in 91. And uh, she died in uh, 1727 in Quebec. So it's all this, you know, Quebecois stuff. But uh, yeah, Anne Leclerc, and then my seventh great grandparents are Joseph Leclerc and Ursel Noel. I wish Dante was here to help me with the pronunciation. Maybe uh, Rene, Rene, he's French, he would help too. Uh, okay. Uh, there might be a fight to a death for Batmite and Mr. Plexoplex. Uh, okay. Uh, John Coltrane's Ascension, is that one she needs? Uh, yes, yes, Batmite. Yeah, Batmite. Uh, bat fink. <laughs> yeah, the bat mite. That's what it was. And uh, I take a good say as we're going to be even worse troll. Uh, what is going on? Uh, okay. Uh, Herc, what's going on with these guys? Uh, I'm down here in the, in the mid tier with Arnie Sanchevar. Arnie was a member in such good standing. He was he hung out for a long time. He just never warmed to rob the wax, and that's unfortunate. And eventually, it caught up to him. I was hoping Arnie could uh, avoid it. He's a first responder. We appreciate Arnie's service in down under in the land down under in Australia, but that's what happens down there. Um. Okay, now. Another album I listened to, but get that Surfer Jets. They're really good. This one, I played three albums yesterday. I'll just go by way of review. This one I got because of Rob Walker. This is really good. This is catchy stuff. It's um, what it's like. Uh, I don't know what you call this stuff. It's like they call it the mods. What do you call the mod revival other than the mod revival? 
Good morning, everyone. I'm tuning in on my way to work. There's a raging tomato. Some people say raging tomato. I say tomato. And we're not going to call the whole thing up. She's absolutely lovely. She's got her own show growing like a wild weed. And uh, she's lovely and she's great. Uh, we're talking about pumping vinyls, troll rankings. You and Sue are top Karen trolls. Well, that's kind of nice. Seth. It's always good to be number one. You're making a difference. You're making a difference if you're number one. Whatever the case may be, we wish William well. Prague Hat was on Sarah's show last night. Oh, well, that's nice. Good morning, Sarah. That's from Prague Hat himself. Hey, it gives us if it goes very good. Apparently, YouTube is big as hell. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, now, okay. Well, so something was going on yesterday. Can you teach me about this, Loki? What occurred? I. What was the last word on the street? Last word on the street, uh, William wasn't going to do a live stream yesterday. I guess he uh, was feeling better. I'm happy to hear that. And he was able to uh, put a good show together for you all. So I think it's fantastic. Uh, it was, uh, I see Scott's here. Scotty, were you on the, on the pumping vinyl show? Apparently there was a, a pumping vinyl show. Now, who, did he have guests or was it just him on camera? How does it work? I'm done. I'm just done. Okay, Brad. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I've stayed away from that channel, but felt compelled to combat narratives that need a correction with facts. Well, I wouldn't even bother, man. I'd just let it, let it dance. Let it dance out there. I don't think it helped anything. Probably not. I would say probably not. Best to let it just die on the vine, but, you know, your mileage may vary. So um, it just pandered. You see, this is a problem. Loki's going to, it's a pandering issue. Well, anyway, I don't know. What was the topic there? He had guests on the show. Now, Brockett, were you one of the great guests uh, to uh, be up there? Who were any of our friends up on the TV show there that we love? David, the pickup artist, somebody like that. Uh, DJ Vinyl Vertigo, I was white knighting for you yesterday. Well, that's very nice. Holy smokes. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of activity happening out there in the in the vinyl community. Uh, we're fi fifth tier in Williams Troll listing. Well, not bad. I appreciate it. Um, Mo Massey showed up for the troll video. Wow. Uh, re -top, R E top Karen Trolls. Wow. Okay, uh, Matt Basterson, if anyone's wondering, the Suffragettes, Suffragettes vinyl is available on Bandcamp. Tea and Hand, wake up with Rachel in my green recliner. How lovely is that, Trisha, to have a nice cup of tea and relax as you wake up and start your day. I think that's wonderful. But, uh, yeah, my question for the panel, for the people, oh, the peanuts, is uh, the mods. What do you call this stuff, uh, this mod revival? That happened around 1979. A lot of good bands here. This is a good album as well. I was really happy with all three albums I played. And finally, yesterday, I played also, I believe, from 79, I think it's from around there, is the debut by Love and Rockets. And it is called Seventh Dream of Seventh Heaven. And this is a reissue, obviously. I took, the, I managed to get the sticker off in one piece. And I simply affixed it to one of my own outer sleeves. And there, there you go. So it's got all the merchandise there. I am needing to have this thing. Uh, I've got inner sleeves on order. Apparently, I'm getting some tomorrow. Or, yeah, tomorrow. They should be arriving tomorrow. Uh, so I'm not putting any of my records away perma style, you know, into the slots back there. Uh, I got them here. I call it British pop. Yeah, but it's not Brit pop. It's too early for Britpop. Uh, like like the uh, even though the you know Oasis devout disavowed Oasis disavowed the term, they were Britpop. Uh, so was Blur. Love, love, love and rockets. So I'm going to tell you something about this. This is hugely Beatle esque. Their debut they get less Beatle as things go on, but their debut this thing Love and Rockets first album. 
based on a graphic novel, by the way, uh, Love and Rocks, a graphic novel. They sniped the name, got their own little logo going with it. And uh, they did well. They had five or six albums, uh, maybe seven. I've got four of them, the first four albums from this band. And I'm good with that. I've got what I've recaptured, what I had once upon a time, a long time ago. Back in the 1980s is when I discovered them. Uh, and I discovered them around Earth, Sun, Moon. Also with Ball of Confusion, they had that video and stuff when that was on the... They got a lot of um, play up here in Canada on what we call much music. It was our equivalent of MTV. What inner sleeves do you get? I just go on Amazon, uh, Procat, and I get the Hudson High Fives because you can get 100 of them. They're the best bang for your buck. But because I needed some right away, uh, I, I've got seven more. This is Beatley Tones. This is a good fella. Uh, Beatley Tone, please subscribe to this channel. A fellow Beatle fan, uh, and I love his channel. One of my favorite UK Beatle channels. Morning, Rich. The Mod Revival in the UK in 79 was fueled by the release of Quadrophenia film. I was sucked in. I got the mohair suit, the hush puppies a lot. The partridges in the film went on sale. Half, for for half price, I guess, or what? Am I understanding that's what that means? We're not Brit pop. We're Irish for start. No Galga. Yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, Tone, this guy, this channel, Tone. When can I get you on my show? I want to get uh, get you up here and talk to you and promote you and tell people how fantastic you and Dave are. Beetle Dave is another one. You two guys kind of showed up at the same time, and. Uh, and you're both top top lads. You're top lads. You're likely lads. You're likely lads. So there's some, this is from somebody who was there who lived it. Tone's got so many great albums. He's got the From Liverpool box set, you know, that Parlogram Auctions was talking about. I went and bought it. Whenever you like, Rachel. Well, I'd like it now. I want it all. I want it now. And it is later. In England, you know, in jolly England, it's jolly old. Come on up here. Let's get let's get you out. Here's a link. I'd love to talk to you about the Beatles. Do you know I just picked up uh so these are all Beatles. This is all Beatles, and this is Beatles, 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 Beatles up to there, and then John Paul, George, and Ringo. So I've got, you know, I've got all my first UK pressings now, which I'm so happy about that. But we'll talk to you about your channel, about music and everything. I love Quadrophenia. Uh, Sting apparently uh, uh, playing a part in it. I should look and see if it's ever, uh, ever on one thing. Like on uh, YouTube. Then I want to watch it. Or maybe I'll buy just get the damn movie. But I know Rob Walker was involved in it. Anyway, I was really happy. This is a good album. Uh, well, this is a good one too. That's the Canadian one. But it's surf music and the girls play beautifully. Like the, the musicianship is as good as anything you'll hear from that kind of a genre, right? This thing was not cheap for here. For here. I want to let you know, kids. $40. $41. $40.99. Makes it sound less. Oh, it's not $41. Bucks, it's only $40.99. And, of course, they're lying. You know, it's horrible. Okay. Um, I, a group of artists that I have three or more albums of gets grouped together and I have a place in my top shelf of records. Wow. Well, I got a lot of albums where I have three or four or more of. I got a lot of bands. I got a lot of Who albums. I got a lot of Weezer. Weezer on CD, mind you. ACDC. Here's something. Here's something I want to throw at you, Vinyl Cup, the other day. ACDC is reissued. Uh, they're basically their catalog. They're, they're whole, so you're right about that, Procat. But keep in mind, it's Canadian. So it costs you about 41 Canadian would be about 35 U.S. 35 U.S. I've been waiting for a Beatley Tone interview forever. Me too. So anyway, if we can get them up here, I'd love to get Tone up here. Vinyl is going up in price. Everything here, we got a new tax to save the planet, apparently by making us pay more money. And giving it to our government, our benevolent government, uh, we save money. Have you listened to Talking Book? No, I got to give it a clean. And Sue has started uh, doing a renovation project 
in our our room so i have uh, everything's i've got to set everything up my normal spot is in disarray is what's happening where i clean my record so i don't even want to play it until i clean the thing I, and they and they all need some cleaning you know the, they're used records i bought a lot of used records the ones i played the only ones i played are all new these are three brand new purchases but the rest i got were all um original first press including a red label hard days night canadian pressing thrilled to get that sounded good minimal crackling and popping in it and i also got out and i got an og canadian mono help i've got this in stereo now i've got it in mono and again with the without the sleeves here's the original inner sleeve that is what they came with this is the real deal all right my first guest i am just thrilled to have him here uh direct from uh, jolly old england and we're going to learn exactly where it's tone tone welcome sir oh yeah i'm a fan i like you you have a good channel you have even more beatles stuff than i got and i got a lot <laughs> can you hear me thanks very much i'm i'm getting i'm getting some uh okay here's what you do make sure you make sure youtube is closed off and you're just on Streamyard. when you do that that'll help you and i will make sure your mic's got no echo cancellation he can't hear me right now he's got his i think he's got youtube but he's getting double delay kind of thing he's got to watch me on youtube i mean i mean don't watch me on youtube watch me on stream here then you won't get the delay uh okay uh beetley tones yes absolutely we're going to get him here um but guys if i just want to watch a real burn alfred pennyworth wow that's butler that's the butler of batman good morning uh mike from the in-group got in first you're my undivided now wow thanks fish i'm trying to get beetley tone up here uh she might want to go through a breakfast at uh yeah this is what's going on well yeah there's a big there's 50th anniversary beautiful 50th anniversary editions happening right now for the acdc lineup they just been released they're beautifully packaged so i mean for the packaging alone i think it's worth it uh you don't play the mono stuff do you me i play the mono stuff all the time yeah, I play whatever I want to play. If I want to hear a particular Beatles, I, I play it. I just reach, grab, boom, and play. So, uh, you know, everything everything's there. It's just such a, a thrill to have this stuff. All right, let's try it again. Hello? Hi, right. Hi, hi. I think I've passed it now. Okay. You got to watch me on stream here. Don't watch me on YouTube. If got you it. watch YouTube, you'll delay. Got it. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm a fan. I want to tell you that right now. I'm going over to your channel. I got all this suffragette <laughs> stuff open. I want to go over to your channel so people can know about you. Tell me how uh, how you got started. Uh, you obviously you're a Beatles fan, uh, but you know something about the mod revival. Uh, you were part of that scene. I Let was. Me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how, yes, I I had that album. I had that album. Um, Secret Affair. They were the they were the big uh mod revival band uh yeah. they, 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 had, they had an album out called glory boys which is fantastic yeah um and uh they 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 did very very well uh ian page was the kind of uh the figurehead he was the least he was the least oh. thing, but he was the kind of figurehead of the 79 uh mod mod revival oh, yeah and yeah i yeah i i bought into, into it big time Except I didn't have I didn't have a moped. I had a Ford Escort van, which belonged to my dad. Yeah, so it wasn't quite the same thing. It wasn't Later. the same thing, but it was it was still it was still fun. But we used to go to a lot of a lot of gigs uh, of the, of those those bands around that that time. And of course, it was you know it was the same time as the as the new wave scene was 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 very big. Uh, the, yeah. the you know the jam uh were, were huge at that time uh in the uk okay what am i looking at here uh being told what what is this what, uh, what that's that's my, that's my front page i think I yeah but hold on there's a young lad a young a likely lad here with uh, beautiful red hair just hanging out at the cavern door 
Yeah, that's me. Who the hell's that? That's me. I that's had me. Who is from it, young lad. That's me. From from about, a, how from many about, years ago? About 2013, 14, something like that. Yeah. So, but time has not that, been kind. <laughs> oh, no, you're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, so this is great. You've got such a good channel. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you. Gift of Treasure Trove Revealed is sometime in New York City uh, that bad. No, it's not that bad. It's got issues. Hmm. Yeah. I've been gifted two record collections. Kate Bush, you can do worse than Kate Bush. There you are. Yeah. I'd be happy with that too. Yeah, but, I, got, I got gifted uh, two record collections from yeah. my uh, my wife's sister and his and her her partner. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I've, I've done a few videos there showing what was in the what was in the collections. Uh, no, no Beatles stuff. All, all um, non-Beatles stuff. Well, all that's all right because I mean I've got records here. A lot of them are unBeatle related, but even over here there's Beatles stuff. You know, if you look in the yeah. closely enough, I think there's yeah, there's you got a Canadian 1970. Uh, we had the box like you got in England with the book and uh, everything. I've got the book, and then up here, oh, you know, I've got Rolling Stones mono, Elvis little box set, Donald J. Trump, my beloved president. And then we got all this stuff over here and uh, some independent individual. That here, it's all in glow in reflection, is a Stuart Sutcliffe uh, print uh, etching that he did. By, it's an actual etching that he drew nice. himself at Liverpool Art College. Nice. This, this yeah. you can see. Can you see this? This, this here, uh, uh, I bought this one. I bought this in Liverpool. In Liverpool. Oh, uh, that's lovely! Yeah. This this is one of uh, Astrid's photos. I was going to say it looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, she 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 took that, and uh, yeah, fantastic shot in it. Yeah, and we yeah. lost Astrid what two or three years ago? Time flies. I I always say that. Yeah. And you go, oh no, that was like ten years. You go what? You know, but yeah, it yeah, that long ago that we lost her. So you've got such a great background. What part of England are you in? Where's your so, what, yeah, so I'm I'm from London or Great Greater London. Uh, okay. I don't know if you know Essex. Uh, it's the sort. Of, I know Essex very yeah, well. Home, the, the, the home counties. I'm a I'm about you know um, uh, maybe ten miles from the centre of London, I guess. Okay, I know I know exactly what it's all about because uh, through my I'm big into genealogy, Tom. So I don't want to bug the kids too much with it, but suffice to say. I made a pilgrimage over to Coggeshell and Whitham and Braintree, oh. all that part. I've got um, relatives in um, uh, Birchington upon sea. Birching, Birchington, that's in, I believe it's like North Kent or some bloody thing. Okay, I, even I don't, I don't yeah. know. I know, I know Whitham. Whitham is sort of in the, in the, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the yeah. full on full on Essex. I'm much closer to London. Yeah, you're closer than, to London than, side. You're like, yeah. uh, what's that? What's that football team? They've got the two names. It's like uh, Davington and something or whatever. There's a football club with the and it's got two names on it. Dag and Dagnum and Redbridge. Dagnum and Redbridge. That one. Dagnum and Redbridge. Yeah. yeah. That thing. Holy smokes! Do those kids need more money to get a better pitch? Yeah. Well, Dag yeah. Dagnum and Redbridge. Uh, are a, a, a team that of um, a morph from lots of lots of different amateur yeah. clubs. Yeah. Uh, they started off as being Ilford, which was actually yeah, uh, the, the, that was actually the town that I was brought up in. I know Ilford, and do you know what's crazy? There's a guy that works at a local uh, pharmacy that's from Ilford. And he's he's made his way over to uh, Vancouver Island, where I reside, uh, Tom. Okay. And uh, yeah, he's a lovely lad. And uh, so we got lots of uh, you know, like we know him very well. And uh, he's been over for a while. It's weird because one of the last pictures we took before we left, I got a picture of him. There he is. There's okay. the bride of Ilford with my uh, better half, Susie Q. Okay. But um. Tom, let's talk about uh, let's talk about. So you're from there. My grandmother, by the way, one last comment. She's from Lucium. And did you know that the band Squeeze, my fourth cousin, because of the genealogy, my fourth cousin was a girl named Maxine Barker, died in 91, uh, 1992. She died in 90, yeah, 91, 92. Squeeze comes up with the album in some fantastic place. Oh, dedicated, dedicated, 
it's dedicated to her memory. Is that she, is that that's yeah. her? Seriously, I, that's that that particular song is about her. Yes, that that's that song is clearly she's about someone that gave who, Jewel who, who was passed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she gave Julian Holland his ha nickname of Jules because everybody had cool names. When Jules Holland, I read his uh, autobiography. He's writing. It says Maxine, and and the was in there. They all had these cool names. They were kind of cool people with Glenn uh, Tilbrook. I was not a cool guy, and so here I am hanging with these very cool hippie kind of kids. Yeah. And because um, uh, Maxine was um, uh, Glenn Tilbrook's girlfriend, he was too shy to talk to Chris Difford. Uh, it, they put up a little sign, an advert, an advert in a, a Deptford sweet shop, saying if you're into the Kinks. The Stones, the Beatles, stuff like yeah. that. I'm looking to play with some. He was too shy to phone Chris. Oh, so really? Maxine phones Chris Difford and got the ad. Hi, mm -hmm. my boyfriend's a guitar player, singer, song. He wants to get with you and, and make music. You know, would you be into that? And Chris uh, Difford, in his uh, autobiography, tells the story how all that went down and how this uh, girl was talking to him. And he was a, a shy kid and didn't know, you know, girls what's that it was like the final community but anyway uh tell, so how do you so tell us about the the journey how do you get into i'm so i'm thrilled i'm absolutely thrilled to have you here can I, how can do I, you do that yeah go can i just go. tell you a great story about about glenn tilbrook yeah went, went to so i've seen squeeze many many times and uh, uh glenn tilbrook in the sort of the late 90s uh used to go out on it, you know, on his own, well, with a with a back with a backing band, but they, he used to do a lot of squeeze songs, and he played this place in Shepherd's Bush called Bush yeah. Hall. Now there there were there, there was no more than eighty of us in the, in this this room uh, to watch this great great songwriter, uh, you know, run through his songs, and they do the song, you know, the song Goodbye Girl, the squeeze song Goodbye. I Girl. love that song. They, I met her in the pool. Her that's name the one. So, so the band do it acoustically. The keyboard player has got an accordion. Uh, the bass player's got an acoustic bass. Uh, Tilbrook's got it on acoustic guitar. They jump off the stage and they they start singing the song. There's a group of girls and they're singing it and they're just walking around, around, the, around these girls and they carry on singing the song and they go out through the back door into the foyer yeah. and sit on the stairs. And the entire audience follows them out into the, the, the foyer. They finish the song and then they go back in the hall. And where the foyer is, is the cloakroom where people leave their coats, you know, when they, when, yeah. they go, when they go to the gigs. And as we were going back in, the the lady who run the cloakroom, she said, you should have been here last night. They went out the front door into the pub next door and then brought, came all the way back and brought a load of people back with them. As, so it was with, a great, the, with the acoustic guitars jangling all the yeah, way. Yeah, great. Yeah, he's a great, he's a, he's a great guy, um, Glenn Tilbrook. He he had a film out called One More for the Road and I went for, yeah. went to the premiere for it and he, you know, he was obviously there and the fire alarm went off. Yeah. And we're all gathering in the in the sort of the corridor, and uh, then they announced that you know it was a false alarm, and we could all go back in. So Glenn Tilbrook, he, he says to his wife, he says, "I'm just going to go down and get all the people that have gone out out the door, uh, tell them that they can come back." And his his wife says. I don't actually think that you have to do that. I think someone else can do that. that is, the wife is right. <laughs> but that's what I mean. He, you know, he's such a down to earth guy. You yeah. know, you know, he wanted to go and tell people that they could come back in. Yeah, the... and it comes across the music. So they're South London. They're in Deptford. They originate in Black uh, Blackthorn, something like that. And, and it's an area of uh, Deptford proper. Anyway, and Shepherd's, Shepherd's Bush, I, Rick's goes, I know Shepherd's Bush well. I lived in London for a few months in the early 80s. One of my favorite record shops was in Camden. So, uh, well, Camden Town, I've been to Camden. I went to the guitar shop in Camden Town. I had to play a guitar when I was there. I went to the Cavern, of course. I did my Beatles tour in Liverpool. Uh, and so, of course, my, my uh, see, I'm adopted in, so... My uh, my adoptive family are from Liverpool. My grandfather, he's from uh, he's from um, Toxteth, but the family goes back into Everton, and my great grandmother's buried 
in Everton Cemetery. So, so a very Ed Topo from Southampton took a picture, got a friend of his, a mite of his, and sends him off riding on his bicycle into Everton Cemetery and took a picture of her memorial, which is a rather uh, kind of a substantial thing. I'm just thrilled to get you here. Tell me how you get into music. Where where are you at, and uh, what's happening, and how do you discover the Beatles? Um, okay, so so I discovered the Beatles in 1976. Uh, so I'm 15. Uh, you know, all my friends at school they're all into prog, and and I can't get I can't get on with it at all. And, yeah. Uh, um, you know, all these tricky time signatures and songs that go on for two or three days. I can't, I can't, I can't get into it. So I'm look, I'm looking for something else. And um, 1976 was a was a great year uh, to discover the Beatles because for some reason, well, there's a, there's a few key reasons. Um, obviously, the the um, the Beatles Apple contract ran out, so. It started a glut of Beatles co compilation albums, rock and roll music. Uh, they showed all the Beatles films on the BBC uh, during the school summer holidays. They started reprinting uh, the Beatles monthly book. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that, the, the 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 monthly fan club magazine that used to come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had copies. Yeah. I had a whole bunch yeah, of them. That, that starts in 1976 as well. And, uh, you know, as... Um, a friend of mine, he lends me the Red and the Blue album and says, uh, which were, were his dad's, and he said, he said, have a listen to these. And uh, from that moment on, I was I was hooked, and you kind of you play you play those records, and you have to give yeah. them back because they belong to someone else, and you go out and get them, and you kind of play them, still play them to, get to death, and you kind of realise that that isn't enough Beatles music to quench that thirst. Yeah. And then you go on and you buy the rest of the albums and then you move on to the solo. Did you have a preference for the red or blue when they, when you first got them in your hands? Yeah, the blue, the blue. Um, I, I played the blue first and obviously the first track is Strawberry Fields. It just absolutely oh, wow. blew my mind. And, um, you know, you just go on and you hear wondrous song after wondrous song after wondrous song. Um, Were you, uh, yeah, uh, are you one of those people that can say this is my favorite Beatles song or you go, well, they're all good, I love them all, I can't Yeah, no, it. no, I've got a favorite, uh, Day in the Life is my favorite. Day in the Life is majestic. Beatles. Don't you get, doesn't the hair on the back of your neck stand yeah. up with that opening piano note and John Lennon's voice? Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, um, beautiful. And, and when you when you hear it on, uh, when you hear that, that, that voice without all the stuff on, on the anthology too, when you hear the demo uh, of it, uh, I mean his voice just yeah, was all, that, the hairs at the back of your neck, up, you know, it, it's just so pure and so beautiful. And uh, that's a know. top ten Beatles song for me, and it's a John Paul, it's a true John Paul collaboration. So it's beautiful that way with the middle, whatever they call it, the middle eight. Where you know, Paul woke up, fell out of bed. All yeah. that sort of thing. My friends and I see. I'm a little older than you, so but I'm not too far off the mark. So you're 15 and 76. I'm 15 and 73, and it's the Red album that does it for me. Right. My, and my buddy lent it to me, and then he said, "Well, if you like that, here's the blue one." He lent them to you. He said, "Here, I'll lend them to you, but you got to give them back." Five years later, he got his records back. By that time, I bought my own, and uh, you know, but I I played the hell out of them. And I remember a memory as a 15 year old going to my friend's place. That was my friend. My parents' friends had a young couple that were a generation younger than they were, but still over my pay grade. They would have been, you know, in their 30s sort of thing. And I put on on my headphones, they had the red album. I said, Can I listen to your stereo? And and it goes, Yeah, yeah, kid, go, you know, go kill yourself, knock yourself out. We're gonna have adult talk. So here I am. I put the headphones on and I'm just taken to a whole new dimension. It was, it was mind expanding. Now, Tone, you obviously know who the Beatles are before that. It's just that you're not into them. Is that yeah. right? Or were they a brand new revelation? Like, who's this? What is this? They're called what? Yeah, what? I had, I had, I had, um, um, I did have some Beatles records, like singles, uh, in the, in the sixties. Um, but, 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 you know, they weren't anything special, uh, yeah. to me at that time of course when i went once once i discovered the beatles and i realized that 
you know, I had to have everything that they'd ever done and realize that there's some of those singles have got B-sides on them that aren't on albums. So you've got to, right. you've got to have the singles. I wanted to know where all those singles were from when I was, you know, two, three, yeah. four, or Part of the problem is, And I know like the singles market lasted longer in England because the American buying dollar was so big. They say the Americans or LPs were a big thing in England. 45 for me as a kid though, I had no money, so I couldn't afford to buy whole albums. So I was 74, and uh, now I'm 60, and I got, oh, Killer Queen comes on. I love Queen. I got it. This song is incredible. I got to get on that. I'll buy the 45. Jethro Tull. Oh, I love that. I'll get the 45. Yeah. Bungle in the Jungle from, uh, uh, what is that, War War Machine? So I picked up Bungle in the Jungle from that. I couldn't afford the albums. And it was such a gamble. It was always painful tone. If we buy a full album and there were only one or two songs on it, you feel ripped off. Holy mm -hmm. crap! I put down for you would be you know a few quid. For us over here, it would be you know our our little dollars. Uh, and you go, oh, I only like three songs a record. Well, three songs actually, it's a good record. But if yeah. you buy the whole record, and there's the one hit that you like on the radio. Yeah, you, know, you didn't like the rest of it. You go, oh, let I mean, down. When I, when, I mean, I was the same. I mean, I couldn't afford to buy LP, LPs. But once I once I was on my quest, um, my my dad had a TV shop. He used to buy broken down TVs. He used to yeah. fix them. He, his trade was he was a, a TV engineer, so he used to fix them and resell them. So I I asked him if I could work in his shop on a Saturday. So I worked on his sh in his shop on a Saturday. He used to pay me five pounds about five o'clock. He'd give me my fiver which gave me about half an hour <laughs> to get to the record shop at the top of Ilford High Road uh, yeah. and pick two Beatles albums because you could get two Beatles. <laughs> you could buy two albums for a fiver. They were they were about 250 each or 249 each. And, and so my, my fiver was spent before it had even had time to acquaint yeah. itself with my trouser pocket. Um, yeah. But, it was what the what the heck they were that price nowadays because of the yeah. uh, the uh, you know the inflation of everything. Uh, my the pride of my collection really is all the first pressing UK monos I got. I have a second pressing on Rubber Soul, but apparently it's actually when I'm doing my reading, I found out the second pressing is the one you really want. The first pressing, the the engineers, in fact, and the suits that uh, Apple wrote, Apple Studio said no, we don't like that. By the way, Tone, another funny st family story is uh, like a distant relative of mine. My second cousin, two times removed, was sent by his uncle, Trevor Lloyd Williams, uh, Trevor Lloyd Edmund Williams, sends him off to uh, St. John's Wood, says, we need a building for our new studio. He's the, uh, the co-founder and chairman of the board of uh, uh, British Gramophone Company. And so he sends his son off, uh, nephew, Trevor. Trevor goes into St. John's Wood and buys Abbey Road Studio in 1929, 1930. Wow. And that's the founding of Abbey Road, and the rest is history. But he lived on. Uh, Edmund uh, Trevor Lloyd Wynn Williams uh, lived on a good long life, died in the 40s. So he was at the helm of um, Abbey Road and uh, EMI up until um, – because they did the big merger uh, mm -hmm. with it. So I have a connection, a family connection to Abbey Road. Absolutely crazy. The stuff I've learned as I've researched the family history and stuff. So that, and Sir Edmund, or he wasn't Sir, his dad was uh, Osmond. But anyway, Sir Osmond. But you anyway. You're blowing me away this morning, this morning right, right? I'm still getting over the uh, Some Fantastic Place story. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's And that's all part of the same family. And the yeah. other... The other interesting thing about that, Maxine Barker, she's my fourth cousin. Her first cousin is a guy named Tarquin Gotch. Gotch is from Northamptonshire. And the interesting thing about Tarquin Gotch is uh, he uh, was the, uh, he's the current, he was the last I heard, he was current manager, Brian uh, Johnson from ACDC. He, ma he managed the beat. He was the A&R guy. Uh, over at uh, one of the record labels, he did. He ended up becoming John Hughes' music director. He ended up managing XTC, so he was their manager for when they did Oranges and Lemons. That's his uh, 
And even in the video, uh, the king, uh, uh, the mayor of Simpleton, uh, you'll see a thing uh, presented by Tarquin Gotch on the video there, which mm -hmm. they release because they do that whole Avengers setup, the proper Avengers, not the American mm -hmm. superheroes, but the, you know, uh, the Steed and uh, John Steed and Emma Peel. Anyway, fantastic uh, place is a, is a wonderful song and a loving tribute to Maxine, who died very young in her 30s of uh, cancer. She had leukemia. So, and uh, of course, uh, I just love reading about all this stuff, but a lot of connections there. But Tarquin Gotch, you can look him up. He's a, a very interesting figure, still active, uh, done a lot of movies, uh, soundtracks. He did the Beatles. He's the one that in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, he got the rights to the Beatles cover of Twist and Shout at the end when they're all in the street, the parade scene. And he adds a brass band to it. And of course, uh, the folks at Abbey Road at Apple, they freak the hell out. Because what are you doing adding brass to Beatles music? He actually mixed it into the actual Beatles sound. They were horrified. And I don't think uh, the Beatles ever lent their music out again, <laughs> again after that. But uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> you know, with their actual, with the Beatles' actual songs. You can have other people doing their music, but uh, you don't see the Beatles do it too often. Mm -hmm. So when did you start your channel? Um, I started my channel about two and a half years ago. Uh, so I I retired um, last summer. And yeah. um, I, I was kind of, I, I'd been watching, uh, uh, you know, a few people on, on YouTube. And I was thinking... I quite fancy having a go at this, and and I, and so I, I I made I made a video with a, with a view that it might be something that I might like to do when I retired, and it's you know I mean it didn't my my channel didn't explode or anything, but you know I got a few subscribers and it kind of gained a little bit of momentum a little bit earlier than I you know than I was anticipating. So it's been going about 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 two and a half years, uh, I guess. And have you had a chance to uh, meet fellow uh, people in the community? Do you see yourself more as the vinyl community or more as the Beatle community, or do you, or are both? Are you kind of both? Yeah. How um, do you identify? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really sure what the qualif what the qualification is. I mean, my channel is 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 a Beatles centric uh, channel, but I do do other. You know, I like a lot of other music. Um, yeah. You know, and. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm regretting <laughs> making it a Beatles centric channel, but I do notice that when I do videos that are um, not Beatles videos, then they get less views and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I like, well, I, you know, I kind of want to make videos about what I want to make videos about, but um, um, you know, um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I you know, I, I guess I'm part of the 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 the, the vinyl community. Mm. You know, I, I know lots of people that are that are part of it. I haven't met um, that many people. I've met one guy um, who who actually uh, lives in Kansas City, but he he's a he's an expat Brit. And um, when he came okay. over, when he came over to the UK, uh, we've actually met up twice. We met up. Um, once when he was just yeah. over here on business, and then the second time we we met and we went and saw the um, the Paul McCartney photograph exhibition at the National oh, Gallery yeah. together. Um, Nick, does he have a channel? Is he? He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't have a channel. No, he's a oh, okay. he, he's a viewer, but um, you know. Well, we got to get you connected. I mean, there's some very nice people in the, the British scene, the English scene for for in the vinyl community, as we call it. Yeah. And also within even you know the for the Beatles people, there are a lot of good people uh, that are that are out there. I like uh, Dave as well. Beatle Dave is a super. Yeah, I like Dave. Dave from a lot. Northampton, um, you know. I, I would get on very well with Dave um, if we met. We're I mean li we're literally we're about two about two hours apart. Uh, yeah. uh, so you know it's not infeasible that we may get together at some at some point and say hello and have a beer and. Um, but he has gone. His channel has gone crazy. I, I don't know. know. I don't know what he's done, but he has hit oh, that no. algorithm. He's hit that algorithm, and yeah. uh, he, he, you know, he's. You know what's it. funny? And I, I'm a, I'm a Dave fan, so I don't think I'm hurting his feelings or anything. But when I, I you know, you just make people. We make judgments. When I first saw his channel vis-a-vis -vis your channel, 
I figured you'd be the one that would kind of blow up bigger. I, the, if I was a, you know, to lay my dollar out, flip, flip, flip. Yeah, yeah. And and I, you know, what it is, I think it maybe it's that more of that London is more cosmopolitan in a, in, a, in your presentation, like as opposed to Dave's style. And Dave's, don't get me wrong, he's just a lovely, lovely guy, and he's a huge support for me. Supports a lot of the YouTube shorts that I put out. It always leaves a a very nice comment, and I watch his stuff and try and support. Uh, you know, all the all the people out there that love the Beatles and you guys get so much great content in terms yeah. of the actual product that you're able to access and stuff. And you're in probably even more hardcore than I am. Like I'm Lennon is my favorite Beatle. I assume Paul is yours. So who's your favorite fab? Um, I, th I think Lennon is my favorite Beatle in the Beatles. Um, McCartney is my favorite Beatle outside the Beatle, you know, the, the solo career. But you know, it's it's very hard to judge because, you know, we've we've only got, uh, you know, sadly we've only got a handful of John albums. Uh, uh, yeah. Whereas we've got we've got tons and tons of. Uh, and John uh, was so people. introspective. Yeah, yeah. John's always writing about himself and his relationships. But you mean Yoko? You know, yeah. you can say what you want. And it's like so he's got that kind of introverted, introspective look. But I think uh, he was just coming back. That's the added sorrow. I remember very well hearing, uh, you know, um, the John Lennon uh, song, you know, the return out, Double Fantasy, uh, Starting Over. And so even the name, Starting Over, you go, wow, this is John. He's back. I pulled my car off the road because I heard it. And, I'm, and I chills went through me. I went, that's John. Yeah. And, and they didn't say it was John. I just, it's been so, you know, and mm -hmm. I pulled over. And I listened. As I was so happy. And then two months later, he's gone. Mm -hmm. And that, then, and I cried all day. I was absolutely a blair because I was absolutely hardcore Beatlemaniac. And so much more could have come from John. He was forty years old, so he could have done a lot more. Welcome to stage, Rob the Wax. Welcome, Rob. This is uh, our friend Beatley Tone. Uh, Hi, Rob. Hi, big Rob. Beatles channels out there in the. Uh, vinyl community. We, we, we always need more Beatles too. We do need more Beatle people, I tell you. Uh, ever been to Legoland to see the Beatles Lego exhibition? I can't remember it is. Maybe Berkshire. Uh, that's close to Essex, I think. Bleeding yeah, it's in Berkshire. I haven't actually been. Uh, probably ha had my kids been uh, 20 years younger, I probably would have been by now, but I, but I haven't. No. Yeah. And now what about... Oh, sorry, Rob. Go ahead. Loki, is it creepy when you're like a single guy there at Legoland? <laughs> Loki, I do believe it's in Windsor. Okay, now, um, so in terms of your collection, where's the focus? Is it? I know I was talking to Joe Mayo, the, probably the biggest and the best of the Beatle channel. He's been around for so long. New York-based. And he says he's mo fo focusing more away from the music and into collectibles. So he's putting a lot of his effort. I have a couple of collectibles, not many. I've got one right here because I was talking about recently. This was made in England. There's mm -hmm. the, uh, where the heck did they make this thing? It's Angon. It's made in Worcester. Worcesterware. So anyway, and this is the original deal. It's in fantastic shape. Yeah. And I, this, of course, appeared in uh, uh, the Beatles. I think it's a Hollywood Bowl album. You open up the gatefold, and this yeah. is. Uh, yeah. 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 And it has showed up in so many books. Your album covers, and I'm looking for, I've got a few Beatles up here. I'm looking for my, the Beatles illustrated record. Uh, oh, there yeah. it is. This came out, I bought this when it came out in 1975. Yeah, I, I had that one as well. And that was one of the first Beatles books that I yeah. read. And I read it back, you know, cover to cover. Not that I, not that I agreed with the reviews very much of yeah. uh, Carr and Tyler um but uh, eventually I took the uh, I took the I'd read the book so many times I thought I don't need to read this anymore what and, was I, and I took all the big pictures out and I put them up on my, on my bedroom wall and yeah. a, few, a few months ago I bought I bought that uh which was the the more this is an updated one yeah uh, updated version of it um, it, it is exactly I think that covers um it, it covers double fantasy. For yeah. us in North America, it was a revelation. This book played a very important role for me because for the first time I saw this. Yeah. Things like it. What's this? <laughs> I go back in 1975. I said, what's that? 
uh, we I had no idea because we had our own in Canada and America. Yeah. We had our own releases. So you guys got with the Beatles. America gets meet the Beatles. We got Beatlemania with the Beatles here in Canada. I got, yeah. of course, now being such a Beatles fan, I've got all three in the collection. But yeah, it was a, a learning curve for that. So where's the focus now? Where Where is most of your, because it's a very expensive uh, passion and pursuit in 2024 to collect this kind of material. What, where is most of your buying dollar going these days? It is. Um, I, I'm not really big on memorabilia. It's kind of all about the music for me. Yeah. So you know, I buy, I buy records that offer something different. So if there's a a remastering or a remix, or you know, there's unreleased tracks and stuff like that, that's the stuff that I'm that I'm going for. I don't. I'm not even you know, um, a, you know, a big collector of um, you know of of, of of albums that are you know from other countries and stuff like that you know yeah. a, lot, a lot of people want to collect the, the the you know the pressings from all over or all, all over well it's not me if the songs are the same i'm not you know i'm not spending lots lots of money on stuff that i already own mu musically um that's what that's that's where i am i you know it's more about the music than about uh, you know, I, I, let's just say I consider myself more of a fan than a collector. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm. I'm a. I'm a vinyl collector, so I do have some. My issue is because I'm Canadian, so I get the because our country's small population wise, growing all the time. But you know, when I was ra being raised, we were a small country. You know, big landmass, small population. Now our population growing like a weed, but. Um, the uh, I'd go in there and I'd buy the Canadian albums, but because America's such a juggernaut, I got to get the American versions, obviously. Yeah. With, and they're different songs, uh, different covers on the albums. And then I have to get the English albums, and that happened in the 70s. And I'm one of these guys, Tone, that had the, the original 70s version, I bought them in the 70s, and then I got rid of all my records. Because CDs are here and the Beatles are now on CD. Oh my God, the Beatles are on CD. Holy smokes, that's incredible. I had to get that. Oh, thank you, Sue. I got a coffee handed to me. Could I just answer one of the questions? Someone's just asked me. I think that's the one you want to get to first, Tom. Uh, that's the one you want to read. Trump, 54, Biden, 46, later, Rasmussen, Paul. Thank you, Wade. Thank you. Me, I'm up. Okay, Tom. Uh, uh, oh, Rob. Rob has a rejoinder. Yeah, okay. I used to work for a company that was Rasmussen. Um, yeah. That also owned Rasmussen. Paul, yeah. yeah, don't trust Paul so much. People. Don't trust the Paul data, but in this case, I think it's a good bet. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't go right no, down. No, no, no. Yes, it's, I love this. Hey, Rachel. Um, well, Tom, you got a question. Hold on. I have a question to ask you. Let's oh, take yeah. a rest for the Beatles for a second. Okay, one second, Tone. Hold no, that you, you were instructed to take all your retirement money and put it in the True Social stock. Yeah, yeah. It's dropped like 30% since it started. Yeah, but here's the deal. Like, the whole Dow is down. Like, I, I was all prepared for this kind of nonsense. No, uh, I'm just going to show you what's... Here's what's really interesting. I want to show... Oh, well, Ra Rachel, uh, it, fact, it doesn't okay. matter if the whole Dow is down. You're, uh, you're no, it's actually, actually yeah, but kitten, it actually it it totally represents the same thing. Now, uh, so the picture is the identity. Now, okay, give me another stock that has dropped, like Coca Cola, which is a good solid stock. Yeah, but Tell you me how at, I did. I'm prepared for oh, this. Well, uh, yeah, no, no, come on, you're trying to. Oh, do I've got a picture of the stock. I want to show. I want you to watch how it looks. Here we go. You're trying okay, to do. So here's, a, here's the Trump stock. Now, right. check. now here's the Dow Jones. I don't uh, care about the Dow Jones. Show me Coca Cola. The Dow, no, but look at the Show line. me how much oh, Coca Cola. Rach, you're, you're, creating a you're creating a narrative. I'm asking you for Coca Cola. I am giving you facts. And any, any investor will say that's the good pattern. Stock. It's following the same pattern, final committee. Don't be right. fooled. Give, by the Coca -Cola. Coca -Cola. Give me the Coca Cola, Rach. It's a dumping trash stock. I am absolutely disgusted with you right now. All right, I'm going on my over it, and I can't believe it. Now, Tony, you were very positive, and you had a good comment. 
can you repeat truthful to everyone? I'm not here about Tom's comment. Hey, everyone. Rachel privately told me her and Sue put a lot of their money into Bed Bath and Beyond, and look what happened. With that. <laughs> look, look at uh, <laughs> look at what Wolfie said. Don't tell Beatles Tom's. This stream is infested with subversives. Yes, Rob. Now, Beatles. Hey, don't hey, hey, hey. Hey, oh. Beetle. Hey, uh, wait, not Beetle guy. Hey, Elvis oh. Cup guy. Why don't you worry about your channel? That seems to be worse than uh. His channel is well. great. It is a fantastic okay. channel. He's an okay. Elvis channel. Eleven percent drop. Yeah. All right. Go and go look and at any. Go get your Coca Cola oh. stock. Don't go buy True Socials. All right. There you go. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, not, uh, a 30, not a thirty percent. Listen, Ringo, can we do Beetle Tone's question? He's been very patient, I might add. Beetle Tone, did you have a question for one of our peanuts? No, just one of them asked me, uh, yeah. Wolfie Baby, he said if I'd, if I'd met any of the Beatles. And, um, wow. yeah, I've met Paul three times. Uh, and if you want to know how that happened, uh, you the the story of it is on my channel. When Beatley met, met Mac, or when Macca met, when Beatley met Macca, there's a couple of videos. One yeah. time, I, I just total fluke, I bumped into him on the platform of Eurostar in Paris. He'd been he'd been to uh, Paris Fashion Week with Stella. Her, yeah. Him and Stella just literally standing right in front of where I'm standing. We're waiting for the train to come in. He's obviously. On the first class carriage, but uh, now did anybody? I mean, is it hard to approach him and, and actually engage him? Or I mean, how would you? I wouldn't even no. know how about going to do that. Well, that that was the, that's the only time that I've met him in a you know a completely random setting. Yeah. The the other two times I've met I met him was was uh, he was doing a uh, a signing, so it was a, oh you, know, you queue wow. up all you all, you queue up all night in December uh, to get you know ninety seconds with Paul. Yeah. Um, and he he is so approachable. <laughs> I mean, the first time that I saw him, uh, uh, that, that that I met him, uh, we were queuing up for. Uh, he was signing. He'd written a children's book called High in the Clouds, and he was oh. signing. He was signing copies of that. And uh, a woman, and I would say she was probably like a first generation Beatles fan. She's probably you know at, at that time. This was this was about two thousand and five. Um, she was probably about 60 or 70 and she just got in front of it is it got uh, finally got to stand in front of his desk to speak to him and she just burst out crying and you know she was just like so overwhelmed and he just he just takes a tissue out of his his actual paul mccartney trouser pocket uh yeah. and gives her the tissue and says you know take your time it's like he's so wonderful it's, it's I just okay. You know, he he kind of he kind of gets it, and when it he kind of get, he kind of gets what it means uh, for fans to meet him. And I kind of when I, when I heard him say that, I I kind of doubted it. And um, you know, I just thought, like, how can he possibly understand what it means to us? And then I kind of go back to when the Beatles met Elvis and what he meant to them. And yeah. how in awe of that of him they all were. Um, so I guess he probably does get it to to a certain extent. He's very self-aware. McCartney's self-aware. He knows where his place is in history. He knows what the Beatles, he knows how we view the Beatles. This puts him in incredible uh, uh place and position, and they all had it. John Lennon, that famous scene in the Imagine movie where the hippie yeah. kid comes out and goes. You know, he's talking about one of the songs Paul wrote. He goes, well, that's Paul's song. Paul wrote that. John tells him, you know, are you hungry? Finally, he goes, okay, we're not getting too far here. Are you hungry? Let's cut to quick. I'll come in. Come on in. I'll feed you. But John was aware and was very patient with that guy. I think in the right circumstance, if they're ready for the volley of public acclaim, because it gets tiring after a while, because everybody's going to go, do you remember when you were in the Beatles? <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember that. You know, like they get the same kind of questions. Yeah. Over, and, over. and how many people have gone gone up to Paul McCartney? Famous people have gone up to Paul and go, "Your music meant everything to me. You changed yeah, my yeah. life. I the reason I do what I do is because of you." How many times has that guy heard that? And that's the highest compliment you can give. 
and I'm sure he's heard it a million times. From yeah, people. and even, yeah. even, even, people. even new people that don't make the same sort of music as as he does. There's you know there's a famous clip of Ozzy, you know, going up to him and saying, you know, man, you mean everything to me, yeah. you know, yeah. you know et cetera, et cetera. Uh, which is you know it's, it's interesting, I guess. They, I think, I love that scene in Help, of course, when they go and the two ladies are watching, go, oh, they're so down to earth. Success hasn't changed them. They're yeah. very nice boys, you know, this yeah. sort of thing. And of course, once you get inside, it's a madhouse with yeah. the, the gardener in there and the teeth cutting the yeah. you know, grass and everything. Uh, the Chris Varley interviews of famous people and SNL. Yeah, the Paul McCartney one was the best of them all. No, it was just simply with Paul McCartney. But I agree with you, Tone, and I think that's there. And there's a real sweetness. And I think there it, it can be really emotional when you have somebody like meeting a Beatle would be just over the moon. Some of our people, Joe Mayo, Larry Graves, these are two big channels over on this side yeah. of the uh, pond. Yeah. I uh, have a, an opportunity to engage Sean Ono Lennon. So hopefully we'll see that happen. That would be incredible. Somebody else has a chance to meet Sean Ono Lennon. Seems to have dropped the ball quite significantly in this regard. Despite all, my, despite all my urging, two-time no. Oscar winner is that. Do I have to no. give you any more plugging? This kid's won two Oscars, Don. No. And no. he just won his reason for my, my, my buddy produced, My buddy won an Oscar yeah. for producing that short film yeah. that would. Uh, they had uh, it if you want it. Sean Ono as a consultant. But I have uh, my other Beatles story, Rachel. Okay, what's your other Beatles story? I want to hear this Come story. On, you know it. I tell it all the time. Well, I sure want to hear it. I'm excited. I got on here. I got no, a I was, at that, I was at the Amiibo show with. For yes. Paul. Okay. That's oh, a, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's true. He did see Paul. It was a great show. It was a great Great, great game. Yeah, he was only supposed to play a half hour, and he played 90 minutes. <laughs> That's a quote. Absolutely right. I try and help Rob as much as I can. Now, Tone, in, in other big news, there's a big story developing in the what's called the vinyl community, the record collecting people. Sometimes, oh, some of our personalities, I'm not going to mention any names or, or draw attention anyway, but they can be quite overly boisterous and they can be very opinionated and like a uh, little first uh, Well, uh, a healing uh, took uh, place. Uh, a little bird told me some healing has taken place in our beloved vinyl community. I'm so pleased to announce that Rob the Wax was seen in the presence and in the company of one Jason Rojas, well, well, who well. is a very much a Beatles fan himself, Jason Rojas, the lovely hmm. Jason Rojas and the Wax. Sharing a panel. Can you tell the children about it, Rob, and the experience? Yeah, yeah. Um, I came on screen and a host to support Jose. Mm -hmm. Someone else was on screen. And and let me uh take off my glasses. Yeah, too. just take your time with this. The, the face of the person sort of went like this. Okay. Oh <laughs> so there was some concerns. You know those dolls you could get at gift shops with the smushed up faces? Oh yeah. Okay, they got they're like a little and they have they're very emotive. It's like well, meeting Paul, they get very emotive, though. It's people. like someone spent a whole day, yes, you know, making me the a butt of a joke, and uh, you know, when confronted with uh, this, anyway, did it go? Look at this, Herkmer, wax. I didn't, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't start anything. No, I mean, it looked like it was a very amicable, like you guys could be mates, you know, in the English sense, you know. Hold, hold, hold your horses. You got better chance of me buying Troy Social stock. <laughs> You're quit, quit mocking the stock investment that, of the great True Social. Get involved, final community. Uh, okay. Beetle Tom, this from Cranberry Sauce. What a hell of a name. That is a great name, Cranberry Sauce. I buried Paul. Has your arm injury recovered? You look healthy. What the hell yeah. happened to your arm, Tom? Uh, yeah, I, I, I broke it. Um, uh oh. Helping, helping my elderly aunt uh, move house. Uh, I, I lifted a very heavy box and it kind of, it was one of these 
collapsible boxes and it was full of hardback. Yeah, and it snapped, it <laughs> folded on you. <clears throat> Take your it's time. It's the most painful thing I've ever had in my life. It's the first time I've ever broken a bone as well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's okay now. Chris from Record Talk. Well, Tone, I'm so happy about the healing process of recovery. Chris from Record Talk. It's an obvious production flaw making uh, Rob big production flaw. <laughs> Rob, you've got your critics. Uh, clearly, Chris from Record Talk is firing darts at you. Yeah. You like but the darts uh, that Tone? There's, there's apparently a place for him to go on the internet to feel comfortable. Yeah. Now, I know, Rob, you've talked frequently. Uh, by the way, uh, Tone, this is great having an American guest like Rob of his stature, two-time Oscar winner, uh, denizen of what's known as Muscle Beach. He's out there frequently rollerblading out on the boardwalk, attracting, and he makes a little money from tourists, I've understood, which is fantastic. It's called but, Precard Monty, Rachel. Did you ever get involved in the exciting world of, uh, of league darts, Rob, throwing darts like, 140. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Rachel, but I have a job for you if you're interested. It's I am called a, it's called a dart catcher. Dart catcher? Yes. <laughs> Do you get a mitt or anything? No. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Uh when I was over in the UK, visit old Blighty, moved my way into Wales. There's a fellow there by the name of Alfred Bestel. This has a Beatles connection. I made a pilgrimage in Beth Gallert to uh, Alfred Bestel's uh, domicile. You recognize this fellow there, Tone? I do. I do. Oh. Rupert, Rupert Isn't the that bear. Lovely? It's Rupert the Bear. Paul McCartney, uh, there was a video thumbnail out there saying Rupert the Bear saved Paul McCartney's career. I think that's a bit overstated. <laughs> yeah. But this is the 1960 annual. It's so good I had to get two. And this is one I, you know, the reason I got two is I pre-ordered one. I said, if you ever get it in your store, please let me know I'm on the hunt. They didn't have it at the time. And it finally came in. Somebody had brought one in. And so I just followed through because I did say, hey, if you ever get one. Uh, but in the meantime, I, I actually went and found one. But this is a book that I had. In 1960, like I'm 61, I would have been three by the time I got this. So I grew up with Rupert, just love Rupert. I even got another one. Anyway, him and his pals, and they have all these great adventures, and it was a lot of fun. A lot of it couldn't even be published today. I think it would be politically incorrect or whatever they call it. But it was great. And so when you're talking about Paul and his children's book and this sort of thing, I think a lot of kids over in the UK, a lot of the children would have grown up. Uh, with Rupert. And also the other one, and Rob Rob and I have a lot of history with this, the fabulous Thunderbirds puppet uh, animation with the uh, rocket ship one, two, the five. Are you familiar with Thunderbirds, Tone? Because if you um, aren't... Yes, you know, I, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with it. I mean, I remember it. I was I was never a big fan of it, but uh, I... Well, the I, acting was a little... I'm aware weird. of uh, Tracy Island and all that sort of business. Yeah, it was all that, and they had Miss... I forget her name. She was a hot puppet, the blonde, very pretty. What, well, Lady uh, Penelope. Penelope, absolutely fantastic. But, you know, and here's the thing also, Tom, I love that, and it's gone now. No English person even knows what I'm talking about. But there was this adventure series in the 60s. I'm talking... 1965, 66, of little English children run around in London just having fun and adventures, but they'd run into bad adults like gangsters and stuff. And they're all kids, so the cops wouldn't believe them. They go, It's a man over there, he's a felon. You know, and they go, oh, go home, go home to your parents, kids, and all this sort of thing. But they had adventures, it was so magical, so much fun. As a kid, I watched those things over and over. Oh, I don't called. know what it's called. This is my this is my I think, yeah, I think you made this up in your head. Yes. I love this comment. Da Dana Kimball was a wonderful Kimball. He writes, yes, love Jason. Love Jason. Rob, there's so much encouragement for you to better yourself here. This is what happens when the children run into Donald Trump. Listen, Louis Golden. That was very hurtful. Very hurtful indeed. Um now, uh, Beatley Tone, if you had one record in your collection, The House is on Fire, Bloody Hell, 
you got to save one. Which record are you going to save? Oh, God. Uh, uh, I'm probably, I'm probably say not that it's the best record, but I'm probably saving my copy of uh, Electric Arguments on CD because it's signed by Paul. Uh, oh, it was one of the, it was one of the, that was one of the one of the meetings. I guess I'm I'm yeah. saying um, I'm saying saying that in terms of sentimentality. Um, if you're talking about what is my favorite album of all time that I'm ne never parting with, it's the White Album. Yeah, uh, a favorite album. Uh, if you had one album, uh, the White Album is your fave. From yeah, um, I mean it, it. It is my favorite album of of all time by anyone, uh, I guess. Uh, Rob, anyway, it's so great to have you on board with uh, myself and be like, don't even you, and I and I say this very guardedly, even you like the Beatles. If Bush comes to the show, he's a, a big jazz, he's a big wig in the jazz circles in the Swano community. He doesn't know much about regular rock and roll. We're teaching him. But like one of the bands I introduced Rob to was Jellyfish. This is a band with a kind of a new psych, a kind of a vibe. And I have a good friend that owns Omnivore Records. I've been able to work a few things for up that way too. But anyway, uh, Rob, Beatles and you. When did you first learn about the Beatles for you, Rob? No, well, why, you ask, long to ask. Hold on. why don't you ask me who my favorite Beatle is? Okay, that's a good question. Rob, do you have a favorite Beatle? And I've told you here many times who my favorite yeah. Beatle is. Okay, go ahead. It's the Dung Beetle, Rachel. It's the Dung Beetle. All right, that's very hurtful. You've got a couple of uh, uh, well, wait. Uh, I like his I like his early stuff, but he was rubbish when he went solo. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, hold on. Hold on, you have to do it like an American. He was shitty. <laughs> now shite. No, I like I have all the Beatles. Well, I have all the Beatles albums, Rachel. Okay, I love this. Uh I'd save my second and third state butcher covers and my three twenty five Rickenbacker. Wolfie. The stuff you have. Oh, well, well, Walter, you're gonna you're you're gonna be running out of your house like Steve Martin and the jerk. <laughs> uh, and Bill K is almost nonplussed. What? Rachel introduced jellyfish to Rob. Hey, wait, wait, uh, Rachel. Oh. Did, did Bill K get awarded with something yesterday? What happened to Bill K? He got awarded. What did he get awarded? A summons of some sort. Well, let Bill K tell you. Bill K, what happened to you? Let me know in the comments below. Wolfie, I'm jealous you got two butcher covers. I don't have any. of This is a real American phenomenon, of course, for the Beatles album yesterday. And, of course, England never got this. This is a, an American thing. We had them in Canada. Rumor has it there's like two or three butcher albums here in Canada. It went out yesterday and today with the original butcher album cover on it it was in stores for about a half hour panic ensued and they pulled them all but uh not before seventy thousand or so albums were out floating around and then rather they had already pressed them up printed them somehow it got through capitals uh gatekeepers they just put a slick over it and of course you can see ringo's uh black turtleneck through the uh slick cover because it's a white mostly a white cover uh with the lad centered around a trunk with uh paul seated comfortably within it uh okay uh rachel bill k is a top karen troll five plus k what i don't even know what you, what this is all about groovy lisa rachel excuse wow <laughs> i fuck groovy lisa <laughs> jesus I've never even heard of this before. Well, Louie, there's a lot you're learning. Oh, this is why people come watch the Rachel's Ghost TV show with our special guest. Rob, do you get kind of impressed when I bring on a very special Beatle knowledgeable person? Oh, well, you had, oh had, I had no idea. I did not how, know. How, explain how it happened, Rachel. <laughs> well, I'm a fan of the Beatle Tone TV show. And he come in and he recognized that I had a TV show too. And he says, hello, Rachel. I go, Tone. I said, you you got to come up here. I want to talk to you sometime. Oh, he goes, well, wait. Rachel, anytime you like. I go, well, now, come. Come and be on well, TV. Wait, uh, I, I was, there he was. <laughs> I, did you ask him how he started his channel, when it started, and all that uh, stuff? Oh, gee. Sue can 
can you do, producer yeah. uh, production note on this mm -hmm. did i ask tone the question about that about what Rob, say it again. Listen well, closely. Oh, hold on. Why do you have to bring Sue into this? She can't answer. I am referring to a higher authority yeah. of the production. No, no. It's like you're being. It's like you're being. Okay, like, that's it. I will like not accept. Be, no, like, I got it. No, no more criticism of me on this show. I'm. I'm not even part of the DC. Why are you? Asking All right. Well, that's your. Well, now you're just angry. Rachel, okay, it's Rob. Like, uh, it's like yeah, it's I asked him. Her question. I asked him how he got started on YouTube and everything. Okay. Loki, I will not have trouble from you. I tell you right now, you you watch your attitude. Okay, you park it, Mister. I'm so sorry, Tone. As our very special guest, that you would have to endure such behavior from not only from Rob but from some of these peanuts, like this guy. This is horrible. <laughs> God, Rachel, did did you ask this question? Because it's yeah, inevitable God. around here. <laughs> You have a feud with another Beatles channel. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. No, we're in the Beatles community. We're not like the vinyl community. We're we're, we're all about love and peace, and we, <laughs> we all we all love each other and help each other out. And uh, that might be in yeah. the British or the UK Beatles community. Here in the US, they hate each other, man. There are. Yeah. The Joe Mayo guy, he has feuds with people all the time. Well, Joe's a fighter. Yeah, Joe's, a, Joe's yeah. a good friend of mine. I like Joe a lot. And uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. That's a good question. Do you have a, Do you have other pop culture interests than the Beatles, or no? Yeah, yeah. I've got uh, you know, I've got, got a, a huge record collection, uh, yeah. and I suppose you know, you know, a, a small percentage probably Beatles. You know, maybe but if I, like oh, I that like, horrible, maybe, maybe about a fifth. Okay, like that horrible, horrible movie yesterday, like the Beatles never existed. Yeah, that's what, what would be your next choice of a band? So, oh, what, what what's my my second favorite band? Do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh oh, god, I don't know. Uh, I love the Who. Um, I love the Jam. Um. I've, I, I love, I love a, an American band that no no one over here has really heard of called Fountains of Wayne. Uh, that, that, oh, no. Oh, I'm, of Wayne. A, I'm a huge Fountains of Wayne fan. Okay, now hold on. Uh, 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 well, they guy, were a brilliant, brilliant band. Uh, hold on. The guy died in the beginning of COVID, Adam Sussinger. did, yeah. Um, Adam Schlesinger, yeah. Yeah, he wrote it. He, and he's written a lot of songs like the that Adam thing. Adam Sandler did. gone? Oh my God. Go yeah. Oh my he God. He was like one of the first kind of, I don't even know if he was that big, but yeah. People that died from COVID. I, he was, yeah. I think the fountains are one of one of Pop's uh, best best kept secrets. Hi, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, everyone knows them for Stacy's mom, but uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah. There, I every one of their albums is a great lesson from the beginning to the end. Yeah, it is. even I, I think that the one last album was like a like unreleased stuff, right? Yeah. All right. Finally, the hey, voice. Hey, hey, Joe, Joe hey, I'm having Joe. all kinds of trouble with Wax. He's refusing to talk about Beatles and loving Beatles the way me and Tone love Beatles. Joe, you love Beatles, but you've been coming out with some very controversial titles. Oh, I am so sick and tired of these Beatles songs. I nearly threw up when I was. Well, even the thumbnail was so disturbing to look at. <laughs> yeah. The disinterested Beatles all, oh, you know, I'm tired of these Beatles songs. But you regrouped and you done. These are Beatles songs I still like. Yeah. So therefore, that was important. Get tired of doing? them. Yeah, it's good to see you here. How are you doing? Oh. Well, I saw Tone was on. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Maybe. It, and then my ears were ringing a little bit because I heard some wax say something. So I'm yeah, like, yeah. He doesn't. Rob, Rob I, 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 all I'm saying is maybe second to me, you've had your run-ins with morons in the internet. Um, Not, not uh, for my doing. Not for my doing either. Oh, stop it, both of you! You're and it was a stupid. I said it was a stupid comment that uh, Mazzy made in there, something about un American or something like that. Yeah, I was again, stop believing this narrative, Mazzy. That the he you. can't you, help it. You know, he's got CNN. It's burned into his television. Like he's yeah. actually got 
screen burn. It's, it's, on, it's sad. We had him on the show, and he's up like this doing this. And you go, Massey, it's just let, leave it alone for you because he's watching constantly being fed this stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Wolfie goes, one of these things does not belong, Rachel. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Wolfie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Rob, hey, 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 okay, Wolfie, right. can you check for a fire and grab your Rickenbacker? <laughs> Save the Rickenbacker. Hey, Tone, is this your first time here? It is, yeah. I mean, I mean I've been in the peanut gallery. Lots oh, of time. Yeah. First, first time on, yeah. Yeah, and you, I've seen the, Joe, I've watched Joe where you guys have been on together doing panels and stuff. I see the Henry's yeah. comment. Henry, that that's not exactly what it, that's not the truth at all. That's the garbage they're feeding you. Yeah. I'm so tired of it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Joe, no, 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 right. Hold on, Joe. Joe, Trump's going to die. Go pick another candidate. I voted for Republicans before. He's a bad dude. Let's move on. Okay, I'm in the I'm in the middle. I'm right in the middle. Yeah, what what middle do you have to be in? I love Joe. He didn't say, he didn't no, say no, he's a dick. Joe, Joe. People show me all the Bibles you bought. The the he didn't say that. Show me all, that. Yeah, show me yeah, all your Trump Bibles. Shut your, your mouth, your... wax. Maybe they're right about no, you. Wait, wait. No, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you can make a ridiculous comment, but I can't challenge you on a ridiculous. That's not a ridiculous comment. He didn't say he's going to be a dictator. You made a joke yes, saying did. on day one, yeah. I'll be oh, like Hold on, hold on. You know. yeah, no, it doesn't matter what he says. Oh. What he, hold on, Joe. It matters what he's done. He's done shit like that. He's ordered people to do I shit, and they stood up to him and said no. So he's done I disagree done with you. I disagree with you. Oh, oh he didn't order a guy to pay a porn star off? He didn't order people to I do that? I disagree with you. Boy, I'm primed for this one. Based on what you're going to say. Let, here, I'm, I'm going to bring Joe, I'm bringing Joe Mayo down oh, right now. I'm not going to talk. No, you know, a disagreement means it's your opinion. It's not based in any kind of fact. He... He didn't do things that dictators do. Uh, he doesn't wait. order loyalty. He wasn't trained by Roy Cohn you, how to run his okay? life. He, he Rob, didn't do that. Okay? Hey, no. Joe, the no, only because, thing I'm going to say... Because, because, no, you, I'm standing up to you, Joe, with I'm your so idiotic sorry, comment. I'm, there you go. I'm sorry. I, that's a false statement. What Joe, made. you might, like, might not like Joe Biden. He might not do everything. I However, I, I never he said is Joe, not... I never said Joe not, Biden in, at all. But I never, he is not I a liar. And, he is, he is he is not a liar and I'm an asshole. I don't care. I don't care about this politics. And he's not cruel to people and a liar and asshole. I disagree with you. I'm not going to be outnumbered by you people. I disagree with you. Okay, you're not... Numbered now, isn't it peaceful? All right. Uh oh. oh you, peace, you hold on. You people. What? You people. Did anyone call you you people, Joe? You hey, people. I'm Beetle Jew. Be gentle, Rat Wax. Okay, now listen. Now listen. <laughs> hold on, Americans. For the love. Wow, of there's so much God. hatred out there. Joe, Patriot. I'm so sorry this happened to you, my special Beetle no, guest. Well, I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't know. I love okay. my Beetle guest. Just I don't think know of the 90 percent of the people that hey. worked for Trump, that hates Trump, that worked for him, that worked for him. That are, I don't want to talk about Trump, and I don't want to talk about Biden. I don't want to talk about that stuff. Well, we're going to have yeah. to make a decision that in a few months. This makes me miss Renee. Okay, that's a powerful comment from Kimball. Go ahead, Rob. You people, what's this? Hey, I'm, not a Trump do... support, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Biden supporter. Hey, can yeah. we do whack a mole Beetle yeah. book? Stuff? Can we do a whack a mole Beetle book? All right, let's see if we've got some of these Beetle books that you're about to whack a Beetle. These are all Beetle books. Okay, wow. go get me a Beetle book. I hope it's one I like. I don't know. It might not. We'll see. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Ticket to Ride by Larry Kane. Larry Kane was the reporter that um, traveled with the Beatles. I can't remember if it was their first tour or their second tour. Do you guys know, you experts? Yeah. Second Who, tour, first tour? What, what are you saying? Ticket to Ride? He, he what was about? the first American journalist to tour with the Beatles. Um, oh. Well, oh, then it, it, was, it was, he toured on the plane. He traveled with them. It's he reported. Yeah, he he wrote. He's written several books on the Beatles, yeah. and this is uh, one of them. Ticket to Ride, uh, Larry Kane. There you go. Yes. Okay. I changed the subject. No politics. Only Beatles. Good. That's my boy. That's the respect I have for you. I love this. Okay. Let's try and hit another Beatle. Whack, even in whack another one, Mass. I want to see at least whack three. Whack another one, Mass. Yeah. Whack another one. Okay. 
Here well, we go. If, if he's pulling from his Beatles section, it's really almost, the whole yeah. fucking wall is Beatles, Rob. Yeah, Rob, stop well, it. They, Rob, they, you're out of your not really a there. Rob, this is like me on a jazz panel. I'm out of my okay. depth. This is you out of your depth. Now, just be, sit back and learn from Maz. Uh, this is the Beatles, the ultimate recording guide. Uh, I, there's, there's probably 50 books that call itself the ultimate recording wow. guide. U.S. and U.K. discographies, third edition by yeah. Alan Weiner or oh, Weiner. I think it's yeah. Weiner, but he got mocked in school, so he changed it to Weiner when he became an adult. Um, he no, is no, uh, one calls, no one calls himself. Weiner. He was an editor, a writer who contributed to Goldmine, and that's all I can say. It's basically what you'd expect all the different uh, entries of uh, records and the versions and yeah. even solo singles like there's a well, McCart- i think it's fab there's mccartney you know okay but look at this massive this is the one you want to get if you mark Lewis- I, have that. I have that i have that oh yeah this is the one you want yeah the complete beatles recording mm-hmm. sessions have got everything who played what when they played what how they played what what the maid was doing hey. while we were playing what Rob, go ahead. Is that a uh, pretty party in that book? Well, let's just take a look. What? Give me a year on that one. Okay, uh, he, says I, he played the drums on most of the Beatles songs. I oh, pulled this it, one. Uh, right. I pulled this one not randomly. I grabbed it because uh, this was basically an interview done with John Lennon after he died. Uh oh. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I believe you. This is crazy. Out there. Crossing the borderlines of being. And you can tell this person would interview someone after she's dead. After he's dead. Now, now, yeah. what, what possessed you to buy that book? It's yeah, a see what Rob did there. What possessed you? To you don't book? know Beatles fans? They're obsessive. And I, well, I, you got two other Beatles book. fans up. You got two. Uh, hey, Tone, do you own that book? I don't. I, I am a, a Beatle book I collector. Know. I'm a yeah, Beatle book collector. Okay. He didn't ask, but I don't know. Okay. You know how? Okay, okay, Tony and. Uh, and Mayo, you know how sometimes Beatle fans that. concentrate on a certain segment. There's something they have to have all of, whatever that is. It mm-hmm. could be picture sleeves, it could be books, it could be, you know, bed sheets, whatever. Right? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. Well, about? I was yeah. more yeah. like that yeah. in the past. I'm getting out of that. I think more as a hey Jeff Bird, welcome to the show. I hey, love. Hey. That. I'm with you, Joe. Isn't that sweet? I love that support. Hey, yeah, uh, uh, Harry, do you have that book where the person talks to the ghost of John Lennon? No, but look at here's a cool book. This is all the all oh. the the oh, comics that the Beatles were in. Look, oh, oh, that's interesting. Dead yeah. till proven alive. One of them is dead, but which one? Yeah, Neil Adams artwork there, by the way. So anything that they are in the comics is in this wow, book. Wow, I like that. You know, Lennon there looks a bit like you, Harry. Put that up to you. you and Lennon. Well, they actually got him in the four. Yeah, four look front. at that. Wow, that's... Isn't that similar? When did that, when did that come out, Harry? Well, John Lennon died, and I took his place. Um, I just bought this yesterday wow. at Half Price Books. Wow, I, that's, that looks like a good book. It's from Italy, and it's in twenty. It came out in twenty twelve. What other and comics it, were they? Were they in RT comics? Wow. Yes, there's. They're, they're all of them are in here. I mean, look at this. Okay, there's like got comic it. book, Fred. Hi. Hi, Fred. We love you. I hope you came in ready to fight, Fred. Fred, he's here from European. The Europeans are very peaceful. Leave them alone. Hey, uh, Fred, Rachel. You're welcome from Belgique. Hey, Rachel, can I say Hello, something about Fred? Jay, George, Remy. Uh, can I say something about Fred? Yes, you may. Uh, make it I very nice. Friend, I have a friend who doesn't really follow my YouTube channel, but occasionally he'll peek in and he goes, ooh, you had a celebrity on your uh, stream. Oh. And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, the guy from Right Said Fred, he was on screen with you. He was serious. He was serious. Well, yeah. a lot of people get Joe. a lot of comments like that, Fred, of being a celebrity. I I have no problems with being seen for a celebrity. I, okay. Apparently, I look like a Belgian comedian as well. So uh, Really? God. I know a lot of people. Can you put me next to Wax? All do you yeah, bald sure guys look can. alike. So. Yeah, ball yeah, guys. Yeah, class, we all the exactly. Hey, um, does 
Fred, welcome aboard. Do you know Tone up above right next to me here? That's Tom Beatley, Tom from England. He's lovely. Hi. Uh, okay. Harry's Tom, Tom, you also, also Harry's music room, the fellow below you, Harry, he is a huge Beatles fan. He's got a massive Beatles collection. He has one of the largest Beatle bootleg collects, collections oh, in the oh, entire Harry, I thought you were going to embarrass me for a moment. Well, I am embarrassing you. And then you, and then you uh, followed up with bootlegs. I have never said this before, yeah, but I really hope Jose Marino Ram panel appearance to derail the Beatles. Now, stop it! You're a Beatle fan too, BB Thou. You've got a lot of Beatle records, and you know the Beatle pressings to get. So if I say, "What's the best uh, sounding rubber sole?" You'll help me get it. So Patrick, stop it, okay? You're not being sincere, and it's very hurtful, especially to Rob who doesn't know much about records and stuff. So just be gentle. I'm so sorry that BB Tell is attacking. He's in attack mode today. Well, it's because he's jealous. Can I just say one thing? Speaking yeah, about Jose, yeah. Jose, speaking about Jose's panel, I have proof that uh, Mr. Norman Maslow was uh -huh. DJing last night on the Jose stream. Take a look at this pic. Okay. DJ. Jose. There's Arnaldo, there's Matthew, and you can see that he is DJing. Wow, look at that arm. Holy shit. Not a lot of people know that Mazzy's arms are a lot longer. But... I would say, Mazzy, you'd be a natural for basketball with that yeah, kind of I guy. think that picture is really complicated. He's, he's doing it like so, uh, you know, randomly, you know, like something like this and uh, playing some records. <laughs> Did you wait two hours to get that shot? What happened? <laughs> Yeah, I watched it all night in re in loops, and I said, "I got it. I have to get that shot." <laughs> uh, I love this from Sava. This uh, panel is enough to scare away pumping vinyl. Holy smokes! Uh, you could all talk about music rather than rock and roll. It's just a thought. That's right, Elliot. Good, good point, Massey. You look so small, but why so would we want to do that? To your very large Beatles book collection. When was the first? Do you remember the first Beatle book you ever bought? Yeah. Um, let me hold on. A I do. All together I, now. I'll be right back. No, I know exactly what it is. I'll be right. Hunter S. Davies. I'm going to hunt them down. Well, actually, that happens. Right? Congratulations, you get a promotion. I actually, think you know where. I know where. I know where Mazzy's going. He keeps all of his people. All right. Now, while that's going on, let's. Uh, I want to turn my attention to Joe. Right, Joe, right. what's happening with the channel? You having a lot of fun? Kids were telling me that you got a movie channel. Like I know you have the movie channel. I'm subscribed to the other channel, but what's going on? Like you're doing some shuffling with things. I mean, right now, nothing going on. It's been pretty dead. I haven't haven't made a video in a long time. Yeah. Actually, so nothing's really going on. I I bought that. Break. That was the first book I bought right there. Hunter Davies. Yeah. Well, that's I remember the thinking that it, I thought it, because I was, you know, I grew up with them. It was real time. I remember thinking when that book came out that it legitimized the Beatles. They were a real, real serious band because somebody yeah. wrote a book about them. Yeah. And that's authorized, is Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're trying to instill the love of the Beatles in all our friends and family. You know, it's important that it gets done. Fred, do you like the Beatles at all? Well, I was just thinking, I, my father is a big uh, Beatles fan and, and collector. And well, do you collector. love your dad? I'm sorry? Do you love your dad? Of course I love my dad. Yeah. dad see? So love dad, dad love Beatles. You love Beatles. And I was just I was just thinking what, that we were talking about Beatles books. Uh, one of the first uh, books that I read about music was one from the Beatles because he had a, a book. It was it wasn't like this six hundred page book like they have now about every song, yeah. but it was a, um, it was a book that uh, detailed uh, all the songs from the albums, how it was recorded, uh, the special sounds, the the like what is it Helter Skelter where where uh, Ringo is saying uh, I have blisters on my fingers, you know, and so. Yeah. That, Yes, and it was exactly. all like this little trivia, and it was it was really the first book that I read about mm -hmm. music. The now Beatles. the interesting thing that you mentioned, that Fred, is that is only heard on the stereo version of the album. If you get the mono, then you you miss out on mm -hmm. that. Okay, and here we go. Look at this. This is a picture of actually me sitting <laughs> with Rob. Rob's a blonde, obviously. 
I'm Veronica Lodge. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, Rachel. Hold on. And, and look at the father. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh -oh. Rachel, who did I say my favorite beetle was? Your favorite beetle is the donkey. All right. So in that background there is okay, a bitter old the, guy okay, thinking you're, about dog beetles. That's Lodge. That's Veronica Lodge's dad, Mr. Lodge. I got here the first two beetle books I ever bought. Okay. Uh, and these are the copies. Uh, on, 1964. I, I just looked in the dates. Uh, they I probably got them right when they came out. So one is published June 64 and one in July 64. This is the yeah. first Beetle book I ever got. Oh, oh yeah. That, and um, yeah. I wrote in here my name, Norman Maslov of the Silencers. This was years oh. later. It's 1966. My very first band was yeah. called the Silencers. Yes, there was yeah, an yeah. 80s band called the Silencers, but we were first yeah. because of Is the that because of Matt Helm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then this was my second book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there. The one like, I love those old pocketbooks. 60 cents and 50 cents. A dollar of my money went to this is where the addiction in the book thing started. It starts there. And then, of course, so many books have been uh, done. Oh, over the God. There's a book that comes out every six and a half minutes on the Beatles. The Beatles, the Beatles were my were downfall. Oh. Yeah, those are, that's pretty cool, those, those covers. I like that. I like the book, Harry. That's a, that's a great it's book. Not, you know, hey, Joe, Joe, you can find this on eBay fairly cheap, really, around 20 bucks or less sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very nice. I haven't but, seen any remember, of those. Remember Little Lada? Okay. Yeah, from an episode of uh, Everybody Loves yeah. Raymond. That's Dot. See, that's Dot. That little girl there is Dot. Little Dot. Little Lot is the heavy set and, one. And, and the Beagles. Beagles. And the Beagles. Well, there were the Beagle Boys, but also, but that, that's Dot. And the interesting thing about that, there is going to be a, a movie adaptation with Chris Farley as Little yeah. Lotta. Yeah. Chris Farley in the role. Okay, here we go. What do we got? Doctor Strange with Mordo, that's Mordo, his, uh, his uh, uh, chief opponent. And, you know, the Beatles showed up a couple of times. There's the Beatle wigs with the thing wearing his oh, beetle. Yeah. I can't wait to see the Beatles. Do you, do you, what's that? I can't read it. I'm looking behind the book. Okay. I can't wait to wait. See, this is so exciting. And it's absolutely right. It is exciting. I'll just keep flipping through when I find it. Oh, look at Big Daddy Roth, even. They had the thing with uh, the Beatles in, um, uh, no, it's, um, what is it? Uh, which Bond film? I think from Russia to Love, uh, James Bond mentions the Beatles. He says, he, I hate the Beatles. He goes, no, it's I called on ahead. I think it's in Goldfinger, no? Isn't remember it Goldfinger? anything, it would have been Goldfinger. When, remember when CD-ROMs almost became a big thing? Yeah. 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 Look at Paul yeah. cute with this little funny face he did. Yeah, anyway. This one's the next that. one's gonna be in the cooler. The complete uncut movie on CD ROM. Like how many versions do you need of that? Uh Tone, did you get into any of the Beatle books? Beetle eat Tone. Did you get into Beetle Book? Sorry, sorry, what was that? Did I get in? I'm just the first, first Beatles book that I ever, ever read was Lennon Remembers. That was the yes, first. I have that, book. that I was have... a that was a baptism of fire. Yes. Uh, for sure. Uh the one I showed you earlier, but the what the version that you got, uh the, yeah. the 1974 version of that. Um, that was my yeah. Thought. That's the revised Rachel's got the first print. Yeah, that uh, that's no, the one that, that I had. The one that right I right this Rachel the, had uh, the, that. That was the one I had. But it ended, all the pictures ended oh. up on my bedroom wall. Eventually, after I'd read it, God knows how many times. Why did they do revise it with the pepper cover again? I don't. They understand. did it. Yeah, that says when yeah. John died, they just came up with the same oh. book and then added a, se a separate yeah. little blurb on that. The original came out in '75. That's a 1980, uh, 81, probably 82 reissue. All right, what do we got here? Spoof magazine. Right on, Dad. Oh, it looks like John's taking it with your cover. Jackson Fiverr there. Ooh. How I knew. Was, oh, look, and there's Doctor. Uh, there's uh, yeah. Captain Kirk. I love Jack, it. Jack is there. Is that Captain Kirk or is that Elvis? Oh, that's Elvis. 
Looks more like oh. Elvis to me. With who is nose. this right here? Is that well, Yoko? Yoko. 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 Okay. Wow. And it looks like Susie Quattro is going right on, Dad. Rachel, there are almost 200 watching, but only one thumbs up. Can we have a thumbs up on a TV show? It does help <laughs> us as a little TV show, for the love of God. What is going on here? Somebody's on the potty. Oh, Twisted right. Sisters. Twisted. I'm not sure where the Beatles are at. They must be on the internet. There they are, top, top yeah. right. Yeah. Top right corner is the Beatles. The Osmonds were there. The Jackson Five and the Osmonds. That's correct, Final Communities. Is there a thriving Dave Clark Five community? Massey was the one that broke the story on Dave Clark having uh, surgical procedures that have hampered his attractiveness. I didn't break that story. It just the internet. Massey, it. I, if I just say, man, I'm trying to involve you in a way that's exciting for the children. So if I say, <laughs> you broke the story, people go, wow. That's that was my first live, but Dave Clark Five was the very first live rock show I ever, this rock band I saw. Back in the day, they did so many bands, nobody could touch the Beatles. It was a hard thing to try and create some sort of rivalry. VJ Records, because they had the right to the Four Seasons. The best they could come up with is the Beatles versus the Four Seasons. Dave Clark Five, Herman's Hermits, all the Teen Beat magazines, Tiger Beat, everything had a beat in it. Dave the worst of them all was... Um... Freddie and the Dreamers. Oh Dave Clark Five were huge for a while, but it's funny. In a way, they became more, even though they had albums, they were more of a singles band. A lot of people don't remember their deep yeah. cuts. You know, they bought the singles. I mean, the album sold, but it wasn't like the Beatles, you know. I think they were on Ed Sullivan more times than the Beatles were. I think so, yeah. They used, well, to, be, they used to be a huge Dave Clark Five community, but they broke up. Or in bits and bits and pieces. Because Dave, Dave himself was an idiot when it came to marketing. Well, he was, a, but he, he was a smart businessman. The stupidest thing, though, I don't understand because he's so That's into money and marketing idiot. and publishing that he never put CDs out of the albums except for that comp. He never put the individual albums out on right. compact disc. Yeah, that comp though is a good one. It is a it's a great one, and there was a, another comp a, a couple years ago, but. That's a set the hits, the hits. That's why I don't know why they just didn't do some kind of CD box, even or something, you know. Crazy. I missed the question from a Loki Tio in the in the peanut gallery. Okay, just ignore well, Loki. It's best well, to ignore him when you can. Wow. Okay, <laughs> but it's, it's an interesting it's an interesting All question. All right, Frederick. Let's see how good it is. What what is it? Does, does Frederick think that the Beatles are less relevant to his generation of music listeners than their contemporary jazz greats. Um, I think it just depends where your interests lie. You know, I don't know. But you mean, are you are asking they? if uh, the Beatles are more popular than John Coltrane? Is that the answer? Uh, yes, they well, that's, that's his. That's his Paul question. Than John mm -hmm. Coltrane. But I, I, I think it depends where your interests lie. You know. I, I, I listen to a lot of jazz because jazz was sampled in hip hop and okay. And so then awesome. let me ask you this: a love supreme or all you need is love? Uh, to me, mm, that's a that's a difficult one. You know, uh, a, I mean, you, you got to answer. I got to answer. Uh, I'll go Great. for Great. love supreme. I think. Rachel. Okay. Rachel. <laughs> Uh oh, that's uh, oh no, thank Massage you. Is his power. I have a question about all you need I'm, is love. I'm far from the camera because I'm on a little couch here, I'm leaning on the couch. That's right. all right. Go yeah. ahead, Harry. What's your question? So, at the very end, when uh, of all you need is love, he goes, She loves you, yeah. I've heard it contributed to Paul, but I think that's John saying that. Yeah, and apparently, oh, go ahead. It's Somebody Paul. did a real in depth thing of that. I think it's that they both wind up singing it. Yeah, it's Paul starts it. it. I forgot which one starts it. it. Paul, Paul starts it. it. Paul starts it. Yeah. But, Mazzy, if you would have asked uh, a day in the life or Love Supreme, I probably no, would have chosen a day, a day in the life. The, same. the whole premise is the word. You have to have love. So you need to think of another jazz song that, um, for instance, um, out of the Blue by John Lennon on Mind Games or Kind of Blue? Kind of Blue. 
But that, that's one's a song and the other one's an album. Okay, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Hey, uh, yes. Matt, can you do uh, uh, the Captain and Neil and the Beatles? You know, okay, I tell, I need to find some jazz person to do a a video, uh, the Beatles versus jazz, and, and figure it out. Because even though we're Good arch idea. enemies now, one of my favorite videos I've ever done is with Michael 45, Go Seek It Out. It's the Beatles versus Kraftwerk. Craft work, right? Okay. And we go through the albums, and I I lay it out perfectly <laughs> how the, their entire career, craft work, copied the Beatles in so many ways. Look at the album covers. Look at Abbey Road, and then look at um, Autobahn. It's the same cover, at least the American version of Autobahn. You know, the American mm -hmm. cover art, and and look at the one when they're the four heads are up there. It's like with the Beatles. There's so much overlap. And Kraftwerk was never original. Everything they ripped off was from the Beatles. Watch that video and you decide. Well, a Love Supreme is very similar to Revolution Number no. 9. Instead of just repeating Love Supreme, you, yeah. Number I, 9. Well, see, nine. I need to find someone who is intelligent. And there's not many people in the vinyl community who are intelligent, who yeah. can know jazz. Maybe Mike of Especially jazz. On this <laughs> Maybe I should do it with the entire jazz bums. Three we against one. Rob, you know? Rob, smart on jazz. Rob, you know what? Okay. Hey, hold on one second. No, not Rob. Yeah, Rob, no, no. Rob would just say, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've been, hold hold on. On. You've been yammering for 15 minutes straight, Matthew. <laughs> okay. I have to apologize. Are the jazz, jazz bums hey, here? Hold on. Shut your trap, Rachel. Good. God. I, uh, this is a good question that Max got. Apologize. We need to get back to it. I don't even know I have about to this. Apologize to Joe Mayo. I'm sorry, Joe Mayo. Mazzy's a piece of crap. All right. Oh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know if that was shtick in the beginning or what. I, I, it, it was that, that it was okay. Joe Mayo. It was shtick. Come on. Look, I bring my beetle <laughs> friends into the house. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on Joe right. Mayo. It's okay to walk around the mall and laugh at my, my bullshit, but when you're in the center crosshairs. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well, I you're just, in the lion's den now, Joe. I'm yeah. telling you what, I just played the Beatles' uh, Hard Day's Night, uh, the uh, U.S. Canadian kind of version, and there's some great jazz. Uh, it's been a Hard Day's Night. The They do a oh, jazz oh, uh, version oh, as part oh, of the soundtrack. Very good. Oh. Hold on, Rachel. I think I yeah. have a way of vetting Mazzy if he really is a Beatles fan. All right. That's Mazzy. Yeah. The Beatles yeah. have been covered by everyone. And there's tons of beat of jazz artists. In yes. fact, there's a whole George Benson album that he yes. covers the Beatles. Yes. So yeah. so your little nonsense parade about challenging uh -oh. jazz. Uh -oh. No, I, I I no offense to you, Rob. I need I need some like eyeballs i challenge the jazz bums all three of you to do the beatles versus jazz my live stream there's more than three uh-oh that goes up magically isn't there like isn't there like a famous quote from brian eno who said that um uh the velvet underground and nico it only sold ten thousand copies but everyone who bought it started a band so what is six thousand but yes yeah, but what's the you know are the Velvet more influential or the Beatles more? Oh, I didn't, I'm not talking about influential. I'm just oh, talking. The Beatles launched a million. Oh, 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 get oh, this stick. This is this is all stick. This is all stick. This is all. I mean, Mayo knows oh, about okay. this. Joe knows about certain things Rachel, like drama and certain clickbait type of video titles. We all do it here and there, and they get eyeballs. So I hate clickbait, though. I hate it. Hold well, on, hold on. I yeah, have a question. I don't, do, I don't Mazzy. use clickbait. Mazzy, who is a better heroin addict, Bill Evans or John, or John Lennon? John Lennon. Oh, no, George, Yoko. Yoko is the best what, of them. As what? Uh, well, Bill Evans is a better piano player than John Lennon. I'll give you that. But I'm talking about a heroin addict. Well, the, the the thing is, John and Yoko recovered and, and got off it. You know, yes. so it didn't kill them. Right, no wonder she lost her, her baby or, you know had miscarriages okay so the story goes mac was asking about this uh uh Beatles fan. what's the story behind mark lewis john i just showed you uh this book he's done a number of books very authoritative was it, that was a while ago was the man I, right there i forgot yeah. the details do you guys remember the details yeah. on it yeah so he got down mm -hmm. into the abbey abbey road vault 
and he found a whole bunch of tapes and he produced well, uh, okay go ahead Harry. did he copy them I, I think it was after that is when all the yellow dog bootleg cds started coming out and i yeah. think there was speculation that he might have been involved somehow was yeah that, i don't know correct, if that's Joe? proven though yeah, I no, think that's, but that's you know, that he was denied access. I think that was that. the that was the accusation. That was the suspicion, and so they went and shut it down. Basically, he was a go-to guy from Apple to like work on helping yeah. them package reissues mm -hmm. and and liner notes, and then all of a sudden they cut him off for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. That's the story. I don't know. Lewis it's Steve, has been it's working like Steve Hoffman. It's, two like, for Steve, 10 it's years. like Steve Hoffman was working with everyone, and then he got cut off for something to do with tapes too. So, hey George, come on up. You're you're good for all this kind of talk. Uh, are there ever without uh, Billy Preston or the songs he is on? Let's take a look at that. The comments are flying. Things are moving quickly here. Yeah. Uh, Buddy Rich did uh, Norwegian Widow, Big Swing Face, live album, 67. I want to hold uh, your hand. Yeah. That just came out. Um, I just finished the Mal Evans book. It was, and uh, now I'm reading the Patty Boyd book. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, Mal Evans, give us a review, a quick snap review. I read it too. The guy was a big, The basically, I think the reason he died is he couldn't deal with the depression that the Beatles were more important in his life than his own family was. Definitely was, yeah. Yeah. And he could and then when he got involved with Fran in, in LA, you know, he actually asked his wife if he could live with her for six months and then live with Fran six months, and the wife said, No, I'm divorcing you. He couldn't deal with it. He was gonna commit so he basically wrote a suicide note, a, a what do you call it, a will. Yeah. Um Fran called the cops, and McCartney was upset later and said, you should have called us. We could have talked him down. Uh -huh. She called the cops. He was so depressed. He actually told the cops, shoot me in the head, please. Yeah. Raised a gun at him. It was a real gun, a Winchester. And, you know, they had no it was Walker, suicide by your, cop. Your uh, influence being felt. I had to get you, that. You just... Well. Watch you, just, you just wrecked Harry's story there. Um, it, I heard Harry's story. I had to get wrong. No, but Walker. the audience, I mean, it's, a, tragi it's a tragedy. Yeah. And, and so the Beatles had his life. I Patty Boyd's book, her, her, her childhood is unbelievable. Look, it happened I mean, in 73, 75 or so. I mean, we got to move on, Mazzy. Well, but uh, you just uh, asked him about the fucking well, the Beatles. Beatles. And, he answered, and he answered it. Up. What kind of interviewer are you? Exactly. Are you a hat? Yeah, the Rob. Beatles of the '60s. You want to move on? Yeah, Rob Walker. Look, this is a good one. Uh oh, record store owner. Now we're in trouble. Oh, I really. No. What's going on? Hey, Rob Walker. How many years since the jam split up? Thanks, Rob. I got it because of you, Rob. I strawberry Beatles forever. Uh, what song is that from? Joe knows. Joe met Patty Boy. Joe, did know. you have? I didn't hear it. Strawberry Beatles forever. What did you say? Yeah, Strawberry Beatles forever. I don't know what that is. It's at the end of uh, "You Can't Do That" by Harry Nielsen. Oh, she! I didn't know that. My, what did I read? One of the guys, I forget who who wrote, read it. Said basically the book is it's oh I, maybe it was Mazzy. I'm not sure, but it's like the Beatles. We know the story and. And Mal Evans. We know the story, Beatles story. They did this and Mal Evans. But there was a lot of stuff. I mean, he he talks about, I mean, it seems like there's so much. So I don't think any book has really talked about Beatles like in groupies and bringing girls. And we all know, I mean, every rock, other rock thing. But he talks about him and Neil. Like basically, protected them. In some cases, auditioning young girls. Yes. And yeah. bringing them there, and I don't think there's any other book that I recall that gets yeah. into it because no one else was right there. Neil Aspinall didn't write about that stuff. No one. Peter Mal uh, was there for everything. Peter yeah. Brown did he? He, yeah. he didn't talk about that stuff. He was, you know, I, I think it's because this was something that is at the end. He didn't know if it was going to even be published, and. Um, by that point, he just went no holds barred on these uh, diaries. And, and Ringo told him, if you're going to write it, tell the truth. Yeah. 
Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, speaking of Ringo, Billy, is there, Billy, yeah. are you telling your children to settle down back I didn't there? Think people, I didn't think people are Billy, not Billy, no. are around. Is, wait, wait. Is Billy driving Uber this morning? Billy is <laughs> the hell. He's thinking as up and he gets. I thought people are Billy. not in cars in a New York City. It's Lyft, hey, Rob. Lyft. Hey, Billy, uh, just make sure you don't eat my fries, please. Okay. Now, Billy, are we driving in New York traffic right now? Yeah, this is really intense. Um, Where are you? I'm actually, <clears throat> I'm actually headed to Connecticut, so I thought I'd. Uh, oh Jesus! A Yankee uh, in Connecticut. Kill Dead some time with records. Dead person's records. Yes. Hey, no, they're hey, alive. Bob, they're gonna die. Bob, be they're, nice. They're gonna die That's soon. our future. Billy's our future roomie. No, oh, uh, Billy's the yeah. person I'm gonna hypnotize to smother you with a pillow, Fazzy. Oh, you don't need to hypnotize me. Oh. <laughs> Billy, how is the store doing and everything? You got your own record store and everything. Oh yeah, oh it's going great. It's a lot of fun, you know. It's right. um, it's a good hang. Lots of good records. People are coming from all over the states. Yeah, paying the bills, you know, getting more records. It's a uh, it's a dream. Hey Billy, it's so great, and you've had a great opportunity to meet a, a number of our vinyl community members. I know my friend Wolfie. Has been by. He's a New Yorker. Wolf, He's Wolfie, I I haven't seen Wolfie in a second, but uh, I I used to see him every day. So I'm, Wolfie, you kind of a bit bad over Come there. Back, Wolfie. Yeah, bad Wolfie. Give me I think money. he's going no. to the Virgin Mega Store now, Union Square, but they're not there, so he just yeah. doesn't buy anything. I know. Anymore. He'll figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> exactly. So, Tony, what, what's your favorite uh, store to go to? What's the name of the store that you like to go to in London to get your records? <clears throat> London Drugs. That's Canada. Did he not hear I go? Something's going on with Billy again. Not me. Tone. Okay. I think, I think yeah. someone's following you, Billy. Um, Rough Trade. Rough okay. Trade is a good shop. A sister eye. Rough Trade. Okay. Now, is Berwick Street still a thing? Berwick Street. Yeah. Yeah. In London. Yeah. Like, it used to be the where a number of shops were, but I've heard a number of them have closed down and, you know, yeah. out of business since the night. We're, so it's no longer quite the venue or the go-to spot that it once was. Where do yeah. you live, Beatley? Where do I you mean, live? Record shops are, you know, you know are just so expensive now. We're, look, we're, you know, we're, we live in the era of £30. We accept £30 for an album. Um, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I, 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 I prefer to buy records from you know record fairs and stuff like that where do you live where do you live i live um i live in in london well greater london so i'm about i'm about, about 10 miles out out of uh out of central london i guess well we're doing it i don't know at the end of august or close to the end of all around the 24th maybe uh i'm coming to london and we're doing a meetup with um uh not the dc uk uh mob <laughs> But uh, I think Rob Walker and uh, Six Inch and Headley, they're going to meet me in London. So if you, I'll, 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 Rob, I'll Rob, Rob Rob George, from Wigan, from Wigan, he's from Wigan, I isn't he? Rob, he's from Wigan, up north. Well, Rob is in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. He, I think, yeah, great match. And uh, was, John, was, is in, John is in Birmingham. Okay. And I'm not sure where uh, he's coming in for the weekend. And I think Rob's staying with his daughter for the weekend or something, or his son, excuse me. I can't George, talk to his daughter. Well, well, yeah, George Manzi, Hall. you're staying with the daughter, aren't you? <laughs> Don't even joke about that. <laughs> okay, we got problems. We got big problems. Uh, Joe Flaherty, SCTV alumni, alumnus, uh, for, from the Pride of Philadelphia, PA. Uh, Joe Flaherty has passed away, so we oh, lost man. the comedy giant in the form of Joe Flaherty. Of course, oh. Count Floyd was and, it. And Rick Beato. And we're also hearing somebody saying, Chris Cross from Altervox has passed away last week. <laughs> How many Chris Altervox? Crosses are there? <laughs> jump, jump. Three, I can think of. Okay, yeah. Rob Walker says, well, my I thought daughter it was Chris knows Cross. from Cross. No. I didn't bring her up. Oh. I didn't Andy, bring her up. Stop it. Like, well, come on, quit lusting after the man's daughter. Saying, no. <laughs> For love of God. No. Rob has a lovely daughter, but he's staying with his son in London, as I understand. Is that correct, Rob? I'm sorry. I'm not his son, too. Rob what Walker, I'm sorry I, I said that. God, that's horrible. I, I, I've, shown so my, sorry, I've, Rob. I've shown Keep my son on my channel. From oh, shut Keep up. Stuff it, Rachel. 
Well, Massey is, I didn't start in with, but the, you're the one with your huge uh, appetite. Your Massey's mass, the one, one with the obsession. I, I don't. I don't go out with young women, believe me. I'm not yeah, young. like even Robin said, Jesus, she's 23 for the love of God. Mazzy, <laughs> Mazzy, Mazzy, neither do I, so that doesn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, I want to turn our attention to the wonderful George Borden, producer, worked with Jack Douglas, of course, uh, the producer on John Lennon's Incredible, uh, starting over, a, a double fantasy, amazing. George credentials up the yin yang. We're here to ask a serious question. Okay, let's uh, talk to George. George, I'm going to bring you right up with me right now. The serious question is: Is George a vampire? George. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, yep. You're when you come to us, courtesy also of, in part from all the incredible things you've done. You have some experience in the manosphere. Uh, you're looking at you're dating a girl. You're trying to get in there. How how do you go about it? What's your technique? Uh, do you have a couple of lines that you use? I, I, sh I show her all my various pressings of different Beatle records. Yes, that's our man. I love We're this. Never, winner. Now, that is George, the way. George, you are a Beatles fan yourself. You got all their uh, you got all their yeah. stuff. I wanted to start by saying uh, I, most of the people on here I've, I've run across before, but Joe yeah. Mayo, love your channel, and Beatley Tone, love your channel. I watch yeah, you guys thanks. all the time, I and I love you. your Beatle content. I'm a huge Thank Beatle you. fan, too, and I love seeing you guys every day. Uh, you. George, I'm no, so no sorry, sex. but apparently there is a problem. We no got sex. a problem, and there it is. It all starts there. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> there is, is, there is a Beatle book on every single subject. Hamburg, you know that's going to be juicy. Okay, I don't want the Reaper Bond. Juicy? That's going to be juicy. <laughs> okay, just put it anyway, away. Okay. What a horn dog. Uh, okay, Rachel. Even though you're a Beatles guru yourself, which vinyl community member is your? I'm glad you asked the question because it's right here, right now. Joe Mayo's my go-to go guy. He always has been. There's two people. I, I when I first started watching the YouTube. And being a, such a Beatles fan, I said, what? Oh, there's movie. There's all sorts of stuff on here. I punched in Beatles, and Joe came up, and so did Larry Graves. And I really, honest to God, I can't remember which, whether it was Joe or Larry that I started watching first. But it was very, in quick, you know, sequence, I discovered both channels. And uh, they've been there. But there's others. Beatle Brad uh, was one. And uh, I hate to say it, but Invisible Ray, I stumbled on Invisible Ray because he does a lot of Beatles content. And uh, so I started, uh, you know, maybe to my regret, uh, but, you know, credit to where credit's due. The guy talked about them. So I watched that. And he's funny. He's a smart guy. Like uh, I, one of the characters was saying, I think Joe may have said it. Uh, he's a smart guy, but he's kind of a, a, out of, a bit out of control, a bit out of control. There are so many great. Um, it's so great to have Patricia, the little Beatles corner. She is the sweetest lady, a new Beatles channel. And uh, she doesn't put out a lot of content, but she's regular with her content. Comes out. What's her schedule? Uh, I think she was working on, like, do a video a month. She uh, she borrows a term from the Joe Mayo catalog, first generation Beatles fan, which was a question posed by uh, Joe maybe a year ago that uh, people caught on. And then, and uh, in all fairness, Mazzy, I stumbled on Mazzy very much through the kind of the same reason. Uh, through the Beatles stuff, because Massey, even though he's uh, not a Beatles channel, very, very adamant about that. But he has a, a number of good. I do a lot of Beatles, but it just, I just don't do it all Beatles. Well, you wrote the book for the love of God. One, not one book out of look at all. This is half my Beatle collection. But, you know. Uh, okay. Well, we don't want that to happen. But Billy's having a great time. His uh, his things are going good with Billy. He's got his car that's doing good. He's a jazz guy. Billy, are you having a little fart right now? What is that? Drink. I think Billy is in a studio in Brooklyn with a green screen behind him, and he's not really driving. Oh, hold on, hold on. I believe. Are Billy you asked for studio? Hold on. People, people, hold on one second. I know what's going on with Billy. Billy not only buys old records and sells them, he also sells nuclear stuff and that's a geiger gowner that's in his car so he's yeah. carrying radioactive it's, material it's really bad anyway i'm so that glad means you can't use the tunnels 
uh, and George is very kind. He he gifted me two of the Beatle mono albums for 2014. It was funny because Jason Rojas uh, <coughs> right about the same time. So I always kind of forget which two you gave me, which two Jason gave me, but it was very close in, in time there, George. And I, I gave you uh, Rubber Soul and the White Album. Rubber Soul 2014. <coughs> wow. It, extremely generous of George to do that, and I'm very appreciative. Are you high, George? He may have been. We no. Don't. Yeah, he was okay. good. George, George, what Beatle or Beatle solo album is the closest to John Coltrane's A Love Supreme? I, I, I really don't think that any of them are Two close. Uh, I, I would go with more like a, a Yoko album would be closer to a Coltrane Two record. Versions. What about Fireman? Yeah. Eh, you know, I, 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 I know I you love that record. Everyone sick here in New York. Um, are you, uh, is anyone here familiar with the uh, George Harrison White Album mix? The yes, the one, he gave to, the one he gave to yeah. Peter Sellers? No, the one that he, he did a mix, uh, he did a mix and then they destroyed it and apparently they found like it's a stamper beneath like 43 or whatever it's like 20 oh yeah six, yeah like scram very early very oh, wow. early pressing didn't he do it didn't he do it and in the u.s there. yeah yes yeah and they yeah. uh hated it and destroyed it and apparently like 10 years ago one was found and then dylan from uh noble records found one like last year and i was just wondering oh, wow. if any of you all have seen it or heard about it or know more about it i've heard so about it but i don't have one I'm Billy, how many known copies are there to exist? I think there's two, maybe three. I, you'd think that you'd know the difference between two and three because wow. it's just one. But, but I think but a lot of people, a lot of people, probably not a lot, but I bet you no people just don't yeah. know. Yeah, nobody knows. Well, how what, what's the major? What's the major difference? I think they. I think that he like this snuck in bit. and had them just. They said like you know he told them to destroy all the stampers and they didn't and somehow. It got mixed up, and there was a run of, of some of them. That's I'm a little blurry on the story, but it had something to do is with. Is there like, a, uh, is there an identifying mark, or just you have to listen? No, to it, it? it's just no, apparently no, no white album goes beneath either dash forty three or forty seven. I'm I I don't know. So if it's like in the twenties, it's definitely that mix because there's nothing below. So I just check now every white album I see, and they're all like. And is it only is it only American uh, press? Yes, only only American. It was like one, one. I think I think like one. They came out of one uh, fucking uh, plant. thing. One plant. plant. Los Angeles. Because I think they just no. I think it was Scranton. 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 Maybe. Scranton okay. That's um, but I, again, I'm making it up, and I thought maybe y'all would know more. But I think it's really interesting because you're right, Mazzy. I don't think anyone was looking for this or still looking yeah. for this. This is like a. I mean, deeper, I could have deeper, one on my shelf. I could have one on my have shelf one. downstairs. So, but uh, yeah. If if you saw my April Fool's post yesterday about the Meet the Beatles with the paste over, oh I yeah, thought that was a joke. That's a real thing. Yeah, I thought it was a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Joe, you know about that? No, I didn't even. I didn't even the the Meet the Beatles was selling so fast that capital actually took record covers of albums that were not selling and put the Beatles meet the Beatles slick on them like Victimone and there's some others and this so is a real thing Vic, Victimone under meet the Beatles yes if you go and other art and other albums if you go to wow. um uh pop psych you can see where a lot of these albums yeah. have sold and they go anywhere from 50 to 100 150 dollars wow I had never known. I thought it was an April Fool's joke. And then Uwe put a link out to the Hoffman forums where people have been talking about them. Yes. But it's a real thing. That's fun. Uh, okay. Uh, we got a question. Rachel, can you please ask Billy what stores you're going to? This is Jim uh, over in uh, in Connecticut. Which stores you're going? Because he frequents several up there. That's a great picture of Paul you got there, Jim, by the way. See the yeah. real Jason has has one. He says. Well, how do you know if it's a if it's a paste over? Like, what? How can you tell? I don't know. You got to look into that one. I didn't even know till yesterday. Um, yeah. Well, if it goes as a real deal, oh, okay. I, yeah, I've heard of it. 
I can't, okay. it's hard to read this, but it's one dash one something one, and then it's IF eight. No, I can't, it's hard to see this. We'll just look for the number. Is it 40s or? Well, the, you know, yeah. the covers aren't necessarily, they don't match. No, up. no, no, the, the, the matrix number. It's That's not the I mean. number. Well, I don't see a. It's the stamper. Rebus? It's what the, it's the, the large copy? number that that. I know. Is, I, I know what a stamper is. You asshole. See, in the ah, dead wax, Mazzy, there's numbers. Oh, wake up, Mazzy. Wake I'm up. Woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I, he is really cranky, Rob, and it's it's so embarrassing. I got thrown in to just to show off that, and I was so happy. And Rachel. Rachel. Yes, Rachel. Billy. Rachel. Billy. I'm passing yes. a golf course. I'm passing. Hello, I'm passing a golf course, and it used to Is say, I'm here. Yeah. Billy, thank you for that moment. <laughs> Billy, what thank stores you. in Connecticut are you going to? They want to know. Jim wants to know. I'm, I'm going to four places. Um, <laughs> I'm going to drive and look at a collection that I've gone to before that has a lot of amazing jazz stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then... To make it worth it, if there's nothing there, I'm going to the archive in Bridgeport. Apparently, the basement has a lot of kind of digging gems, like $5 things. And it, okay. they also sell videos and DVDs and Criterion Blu-rays. Um, oh, nice. And then, uh, there's a, and then I'm going to a, a pawn shop to pick up two Techniques 1200 MK2s. Uh, which is also very exciting. And then there's another shop. I think it's called like Elm City that if timing works out, I think that's closer to New Haven. I yeah. might check that out. Um, there's a place called Merle's I went to last time that was a nightmare. Yes. So I will not be going back to that. But if anyone has yeah. any recommendations yeah. in the area, I'm uh, down to clown. Wait, what? Uh, okay. To the right, Mazzy, to the right of the long matrix, there'd be a letter and two numbers. Just uh, uh, separated to the right of the long matrix. <laughs> um, dash. I'm, uh, I'm waiting for mouse. Okay, yeah. No, separated from that matrix with the dashes over uh, to the right side after the matrix ends. There's space, God, and then there'll be a letter mouse. and two numbers. Listen to George. J seven four. There you go. Yes, seventy four. J seventy four. I I just opened one. that's J fifty five. So you're not going to find anything below. Rachel, I would like to do a little quiz. See, I would oh, like to do. I want you, you to do a quiz. I just have a quick word for for uh, Billy. Billy, the basement, this is Mike who's in New York. He goes, the basement at the archive is no longer accessible. They moved everything upstairs, Billy. There's not much there right now. Thank H68. you. H68. H68. Rachel, show me. Bingo. 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 You saw my battleship, Massey. I would prioritize Elm City. Elm City. Oh, wait, wait. Do, they, Elm City. Do we know what the matrix is of this George mix? Anything below uh, what what Billy said? Something like forty or something like that. Forty-three, and you know forty-seven. Rob's gonna Rob is gonna find one now. You know who he is. Well, I have it's a beat up. I have an OG beat up US copy over here somewhere. Okay. Check it out, and I think it has to be from Scranton too, right? I think it's got to be Scranton. Apparently, below I'm sure 40. there's something on the Hoffman about it. Wow. Well, this is Billy. You've really stumbled on something of uh, of interest to us. Richard Hamilton design. Yes. <laughs> the embossed Beatles. And, and numbered. numbered. Embossed and numbered. Apparently, the uh, the numbering system was. They were going to initially do some sort of draw, a drawing. Yeah, that, that was a rumor. That was a, an idea. Oh my and god! So they and then they were going to pick a random. I mean, I have a nice, I have a nice copy somewhere else, but forty-one, J forty-one. Okay, now Fred, you want you to do your trivia question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Got a yeah, you, have to, you have to put us. You have to put all nine of us up, and you have to put me on uh, under uh, George. Okay, you go under George. Okay. And what Wings album is this? What Wings album is this? Back to the Egg. It, it's got to be Ram. Back to the Egg. Look at look at George and me. It's Back to Ram the Egg. Ram is not a Wings yeah. album. Well, I, anyway, uh, I, I have to be looking I down like this. What, what, 
I don't know what drugs were in my breakfast. So it never mind. Ab you are absolutely flying high. Here we go, Rob. With the wings of this yeah. is incredible. Uh, PB Thal, it's one of your favorites of Japanese brass. Hey. It's one of those oh, miniature ones. CDs. Wow, that's unusual. Oh, good. Let's see. Japanese. Uh oh, this is there, a rude gesture, even. <laughs> uh, so I'm so happy to have you on, and also Beetle Tone. Massey, do you get uh, inspired by the <coughs> Beetle Channels maybe to do a do over, a bit of a do over? Your channel's been struggling lately. Maybe a little more Beatles content could help it. Uh, here we go with Harry Scott stuff. Dr. Hi, Jekyll and Mr. Ed. Dr. Jekyll with Mr. Ed. The yeah. horse, the talking oh, horse. The horse. You know, never, horse. Never trust a person with a far side table gallery. The only one, the far side I love, my favorite is uh, the Midvale School for the Gifted, the pushing on the pull door. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just, <laughs> it's just a classic. What, what about the one, what, uh, what your dog hears? Blah, 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 Fido. Blah, 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 Fido. Well, I was afraid this might happen. We're at a low point at the uh, top of uh, the pride of Southampton, England, telling us we're at a low point. We're trying to do good, Ed. Okay. I got some heavy hitters. George, uh, you've been making music. Uh, rumor has it you've been making music. Yes. Is any of your own music available for purchase that we can go and buy a George Borden album and uh, support your efforts? Rachel, this is a Scranton pressing. Okay. Uh -oh. Well, look at the Matrix then, Rob. Well, the Matrix. I have a J41 and a J40. A J40 yeah, that, that feels system. low. That feels low. That's, that's what I have, J41 and J40. There's a three, I number three in the Matrix, too. H H68 is my lowest. Making me want to look. So I think, uh, so I think what you're other, find it's, it's like looking it's for Easter eggs. It's one of those, it's so one of those I, things that's rare but isn't good. You gotta find it in the 20s, Rob. Okay, so this is a second Scranton pressing. What does that mean? It means it's a oh, second Scranton pressing. It wasn't like the time. Position exactly. is tragic. It means well, that they ran out and requested more. Scranton, Scranton. Exactly. It means a second pressing could even come out the same year, right? The album could. Uh, oh, could yeah. yeah. The Beatles, yeah. yeah. Rachel, mine's the rare. Uh, this is rare. Can you make me big? All right, here we go. Big with Rob. This is the rare one that has tape holding it together at the top. Oh boy, Rob! It's a, it, we get all excited and then you do that kind of. It's very airful, especially Billy. Hey, this, this tape was put on. This tape was. Hey, this was tape was put on by George's uh, marijuana dealer. Uh, Wolfie knows a, a great deal about the Fab Four himself. He's got a great collection. Someone in the gallery said before, J34, J34, possibly. Uh, this is something well, very well, interesting. Okay, wouldn't H68 be before that, before J? H-I-J. No, no, it's not the, let, the, the letters, the distinction of the plant. Oh. Yeah, and it, it has nothing to do with the timing, I don't think. I think they might have like, slid it in, like, you know, like... Yeah, I I mean, uh, some of them, you know, uh, for the uh, Indianapolis plant with the eye and the dead wax. Uh, I, think only, I think only Neo and Trinity can figure out what the Matrix is, right? My, my other yes. like, yeah. my Which copy pill? of the White Album is in the 80s. Chris, it is about the music, but we're also interested. Courtney, stop it. You're a professor for the love of God. Show some respect. Uh, okay, so we got to be with Tom. Uh, Joe had to pop off for a second. I finally get a chance to watch a show. And Dylan then made a video. So just watch did you video. not get my? Did you not get my uh, restraining order? I said, Dylan Love you, made a video. Just watch the video. The guy's been stalking me. Um, you said because inexplicably there are 191 people watching this nonsense. I'll never understand. Listen, we're Beatle people. We love the Bible. Okay, that's who now, you are, Angelo. No, that's who you are. Now stop it. Don't do that to Angelo. So you got a good panel, and we're not talking drama or politics. Well, that's until because you, we until have a good you, panel. Until you mention politics, Mazzy. Mazzy, I thought you were on your way to San Francisco tomorrow morning. I leave tomorrow oh. morning. Oh, that's good. I almost got tried to break into your place today. Yeah, when are you when are you putting well, the, I, I left, the I left the, the key. Theory. I left the key and the alarm code under the front door mat. Okay. Thank you. We're gonna have your deck completely gone by the time you get back. Well, you can you can repair it from the outside. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do my bit. I'll go in the middle here. 
Hey, folks, uh, give us a thumbs up. It does help the show. It's in the algorithm. And so if we can get 50 thumbs up, we got 187 watching right now. The thumbs up, it really does help out. Yeah, no. thumbs up. I think we can do a little bit better. No, oh, hold on. We got, apparently there's more. I mean, more, more. Okay. We're okay. Think, We're doing all right. Thank you, everybody. A, a real Beatle fan, in yeah. my opinion, can't name their favorite album. Um, I'm it changes like all the time. The mind changes yeah. all the time, too, quite frankly. It's the one the you're one listening I, to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, hold on. Just, I could yeah. name the worst. Hold on, Who's Harry. <laughs> Harry. Mine What's your least favorite? What? Yellow Submarine, least favorite. Okay. Harry, what's your favorite Springsteen album? Uh, Wild the Innocent and the East Street Shuffle. Soon to come out a, on a Mobile Fidelity. Yeah, Ben, you're, that's, you're not a real Springsteen. I'm not a real fan. Oh, <laughs> Harry got me good yesterday. Of course, it was April 4th. He showed a UHQR uh, Led Zeppelin 2. No, I, that wasn't or, me. Who did that one? I, I thought know. that was you. I thought it was my... Anyway, did, I think it was waxed. Yeah. yeah well, look, Harry did. Harry did it. My my April Fool was rid the best one. Yeah. Um, okay, for Bruce Springsteen fan, you know, I, I my favorite song from him, although he's did a did a number Jungle Land. Really, I love the one uh, you know, got a wife and left his wife and kid in Baltimore. Jack went out for a ride, never came back. I love that. The Hungry Heart, Hungry Heart, I love that. Yeah, that's got um uh, Flo and Eddie singing on background. Well, they yeah. showed up everywhere. Flowing Tony everywhere. runs my favorite, but Wild is a Wild is a Wild is a second, close to second for me. Did you see Bruce on Curb Your Enthusiasm? Not, no, no, I heard yet. about it. I've got to watch it. Yet. I haven't watched it yet. You just spoiled it for all of us. It's amazing. He's he's so good. Like he's he's so good. He does an amazing job. I got. Uh, I have yeah. to wait to buy the DVD set. I don't get. I, you know, when it comes it'll be out, on YouTube. Like yeah, I've got a lot of the curb. But we've. But uh, you want to watch the series? I mean, the whole series. You yeah. Know? But that's what. I, but I, even as much as I yeah. like it, I think it is getting tired. I it was, is. I, it prefer, is. I got oh, the first so eight series on that. My favorite series was the one when they were doing a send up on the producers, oh, and yeah. then oh, finally yeah. with David Schwimmer. I mean, that was brilliant. That was just. Wheels within wheels. A lot of a lot of good humor in there. Uh, Nebraska is the best. Bruce, Sting, Bruce Springsteen. The river for me is the river. I mean, I USA. saw him tour and do the entire River album, but that's yeah. not my favorite album. Commercial. Uh, okay, Wolfie wants to know. Hey, Billy, what time will you be at the store next? Like, when's the when's the next business uh, day for you? Thursday at six p.m. Six o'clock at night. Thursday he'll be at the store wealthy. It's this guy's it's this guy's birthday today. Okay, hang yeah, on. Leon. Leon Russell. He just passed. I got yeah, to meet Leon. Yeah. Recently. Listen, yeah, Beatley, got... Beatley Tone, did you see that question? Somebody asked us when's the so, next episode is stuck inside these four. Should walls? I get a hat like that? I did. I did. I did. I, I, I think Tom and Andy have lost their appetite for it, yeah. I, we we just have to wait till we get the call. Yeah. Right? We get okay. We, who does, so who does who organizes that feature, uh, Tom? The two the two legs guys, uh, Tom Hanyardi and Andy Nichols, oh, yeah. usually, usually uh, decide when there's going to be an episode, and then they ask. Yeah, because I've kind of been waiting myself to wondering when it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, Tom's an old hand at all this stuff. A big McCartney fan, of course. Uh, good channel. He's a good guy. I like Tom. I haven't seen him in a while, but. Uh, you know, people get busy. You can't be everywhere. Double Listen, Live Gonzo is a good album. And I'm not really a big Ted Nugent fan, but I do like that album. I'm going to uh, have to listen to this Beyonce cover because all I hear is everybody saying it's great. Yeah. Well, have you heard it, uh, Tom? Uh, yeah, I don't like. I don't like it. Are, are they using a? Are they using the a sample from the White Album? It sounds they're, like they're not using a sample. They're using the actual guitar part. They took is, um, McCartney that's a gave sample. them. That's a reason alone I won't listen to. Yeah, George is a sample. Is a, you're splitting hairs, man. A sample, That's a sample. Is a section. They're using the whole guitar track. She mm -hmm. sings it, but the what's great about it, her voice is pretty faithful. It's nothing new, but the harmonies that come in of the other three women is fucking mm -hmm. beautiful. I think it works better on the full album, 
than on its own. But it is a carbon copy in a way um, of McCartney. It's yeah, beautiful. it's not. It's not just the guitar though, is it? It's the. It's the percussion. Well, is it a packing place? It's his foot. It's his yeah. foot. Yeah. He's tapping his foot He's on the floor. Foot, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That song was recorded on my birthday, June eleventh, nineteen sixty-eight. Look in your Beatle books. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, which mix the, the George Harrison? I did. Mix? I looked in the book uh, and it was shocking. It no, says there's no George recorded Harrison on mix. George Borden's birthday. Hmm. Yeah, right do you book. think that they actually took the multi tracks and shipped them from uh, England over to America so George could remix the I, or the I, eight I, tracks of that? No, there's no way not. that that he remixed it anything not. in America. Course, maybe. Not. Yeah. Maybe toyed with some reverb levels and maybe moved some he basically, uh, you know, songs uh, around or something he like basically that. Basically, did no Dave name. Dexterization, Dave Dexter's. Uh, yeah, record. he did. Yeah, he did. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, George, I didn't get quite uh, the answer. I or I wasn't. Maybe I wasn't here. Uh, but about your own album, do you have any albums out yourself? You know, George Borden. I do. You know, I do. Follow. Uh, no, I I do. They're out there. Uh, you know, there's on Spotify at this point. All the vinyls okay. gone. So uh it, you know there's some under my name and then there's uh some stuff with me and and uh prairie prince so it would be called borden dash prince okay. it's all out there it's been out there uh there's also stuff on my youtube channel there's a live concert of me and yeah. prairie doing the album in its entirety and then there's uh some documentary footage of us in the studio well, did with, you ever uh, do uh, red, did you ever do red corvette with prince no, no, it's it's not it's not Prince. It's Prince. I know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, I know, but you you know most people do that. They, you know, you played with Prince. No, it's a no. drummer so, that's too. Harry, go ahead, and then we'll go so to Rob. Henry's post about the blackbird with the birds chirping. They used the wrong birds. Those are not blackbirds chirping. Yeah. Those are like some other. Well, like, yeah, that's no surprise Harry, there. Harry, so, you're uh, a man. Come on, let's get. I mean, you got to do it. Harry, do it right. Harry, you're a Beatles nerd. They made they made Mal Evans go down to a pet store and steal some finches, and they recorded those. I think for the uh, go record. ahead, uh, Fred. Mal, get us some birds. Yes, yeah, Frederick, Mal, to my guitar and go get us some finches. Oh and pick up a couple of Frederick, you know, it's a crazy pill. Fred, go ahead, try. Uh, you're muted, Fred. Now through the but you've uh, muted. Well, can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Can you hear me? I just wanted, uh, I have a Angela, copy of Revolver. Come from? I have a copy of Revolver, and it appears to be the withdrawn mix. Do you, you guys know that? It's uh, Oh, yes, we're aware of that one, yeah. And, and The first and actually, one with the alternative uh, Tomorrow Never Knows on it, that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's got a uh, XEX uh, 606 in the <laughs> matrix or something. Yeah. Yeah. Dash. Yeah. It's a funny thing. I bought that uh, like maybe 25 years ago or longer, maybe 30. And wow. because my dad has all the Beatles albums and Revolver is my favorite. It still is my favorite. And yeah, it's uh, a great album. Very I just wanted a copy for myself, you know, that I didn't have to uh, pick it from my dad. And uh, I bought it for like 10 euros, but uh, and it appears to be that with wrong mix, but it's totally worn. You know, it's uh, I, I asked it to um, to a, a collector and he said, well, OK, it is with wrong mix, but it's the the it's totally worn. You know, it's uh, a lot of surface noise and stuff like that. So, yeah, that uh, that mix has been av available in other subsequent reissues. Beatles. Yeah, or whatever I, thought, I thought I had gold in my hands, but uh, no. Not well, really. only because it's come out in different formats, so people do have access to them. Yeah. To them right? yeah, I, um, I love this comment from Jens. Bruce Springsteen convinced the Blue Oyster Cult to include Going Through the Motions, which is a great, happy, upbeat, light, fair song, appearing on the 1977 album, I want to say 77, Spectres. That also featured Godzilla. Whoa, no, there goes Tokyo. Whoa, go Godzilla. What a great album that is, Blue Oyster. Yeah, Cult. but it's not their best. Their, their first three like albums are their best. Going through the motions is still great. Going through the motion, Bruce Springsteen made the right call. I like the song. It's very catchy. It's got now, a great beat, and I can dance to it. Dick Clark, go ahead. There's there. an there's an Eagle song called "New Kid in Town." Oh yeah. And there's an interview with uh, Don Henley where he says that the song was written about Bruce because he was playing at the Roxy. And all the all the word was how great Bruce is, his new guy, and literally the song is about him. 
Well, uh, more problems for you, Harry. You're the reason Angelo does not want to be a Beatles fan, and this is this feud. Well, that's that's on. good, Angelo, because that means you won't be getting that butcher cover. And this also is a nasty turn of events. Rachel, if you're interested, has some George Borden revenge sex tapes. Right, is very hurtful. Stunty, please no. Stunty, please no. Uh, exemplified. Everybody's revenge. talking about the new kid in town. So the new kid's supposed to be Bruce. Yes. There's a new kid in town. Uh, okay. Thank you for explaining that comment. Are you Springsteen Blue Oyster Cult? Could not figure it out at all. Wow. Uh, rename today's stream to Beatles Rachel's Ghost. Yes, we could do that. All of this started with the Ghosties Awards, you know. Harry is so bad, and there's almost a I'm little. Bad, I'm bad. I'm bad. You I'm know bad. it. I'm bad. I'm bad. You know. My favorite. It. My favorite part of that whole bad thing is when he's like Michael's trying to be the tough Who's guy. Bad? He's got his hoodie on, and then he goes, "No, leave me!" And then he breaks away. And he runs. He runs away from the tough New Yorkers. It's frightening. If you ain't bad, you ain't nothing. You well, ain't Ed, nothing. Ed, Ed Topo, the meatloaf's bad out of hell. I mean, it's got like. Max Weinberg on drums. It's got Roy Bitten on keyboards. I mean, it's a lot of it is does have a Springsteen sound to it. This could be a nice thread, you know. You know, somebody Harry, you mentioned bad, and someone else mentions bad out of hell. This could be a nice thread, you know. Can we sing? Can we have something with hell in the title, and everyone makes a thread? You know, no. Highway to Hell. I am the God of Hellfire. Highway to Hell, and I bring hey, you. Had an amazing story. Arthur Brown showed up. On, Larry Grace was doing a live stream. From what I understand, it was very impromptu. And Brown was watching them, and they happened to be discussing, you know, uh, the Hellfire tune. And he showed up on, <laughs> on the uh, live stream and then sat down, had a nice talk with him. Look at this. Was that a Slayer? What are we looking at here? Yeah, uh, Hell Waits. We're, we're going for hell, uh, hell titles. There's one. Yeah, are when you, you get uh, Jesus, you, a... you get the devil, too. Okay, now this is interesting. George, are you a metal guy at all? Uh, I don't really consider myself to be uh, this or that, but I, I do have a lot of metal records, and I, I like uh, I like what people call heavy metal. Yeah, sure. I mean, some of us are, are more pretenders that way. Like, I, yeah, I have a lot of stuff, but I'm not as eclectic as many. You know, I have I got, I got some good metal collection. I'm kind of interested, George, in the um, ACDC reissued the 50th anniversary they are beautifully packaged for one thing i've got a lot of ogs so maybe to complement that you know i was saying at least get a few of them because they look so nice with stick special stickers they created for the 50th anniversary it looks like a lot of care and effort was put into releasing these things have you any of the panels seen these or the peanut gallery anybody got them how do they sound any names uh, mastering these things not going to buy them now you don't like ACDC, Harry? I love them, but I have you know I have early original Atlantic pressings. I don't need to buy reissues. Yeah, I've, I'm the same thing. I just picked up, as a matter of fact, the, the first Canadian press. If you allow me, Rachel. Oh, okay, go ahead. I just want to say I just got it. look at that with the. I mean, they put a lot of effort yeah, into. I, just, I, I, I prefer the Bon Scott era. I, they're all good, I but I prefer Bon Scott. I, Go ahead, Rob. Back in black, I just picked up back in black Robert Ludwig master. Yeah, the, see that'd be that'd be beautiful. Okay. Uh Fred, I'd, like to, I'd like to pick up on what the concert buddy said in the comments, you know, that uh, the yeah. story behind the song Bad is that Michael Jackson wanted uh Prince to sing on the track. And there's a funny interview on YouTube where you can uh Prince explains why he didn't do it because the first line in the song Bad is Yeah, your butt is your mine. Butt, your butt is mine, and Prince saying, mm -hmm. you know saying to michael right. you ain't singing that to me and i sure ain't singing it to you so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw that that's good uh once on a bus trip from mexico city to oaxaca they played the meatloaf movie involving vinyl highway rage it was not the most comforting but given the situation somewhat hilarious on the way there road rage ex expose uh bon scott a lot of people like bon scott Sadly, uh, you know, another casualty, you know, well, he died on his own vomit, you know, this sort of situation. Uh, I, think 
I think it's okay to include the first two Brian Johnson records into the Bon Scott era and just call it a day with ACDC. You know what I mean? Like just put back in black and for those about to rock in there and just call that, you know, the, the, the prime ACDC catalog and then pick your favorite later records and throw them in there. And I think it's all one big good catalog, but I don't to differentiate it like that, but. Hey, pasting over covers in the early sixties or mid sixties wasn't <laughs> uncommon. Totally, but, but why have well, we why have we not heard of this a long time ago? People, why is because it not, I don't think, not I more think valuable? It was an aberration. Are people finding the same rec, the same cover underneath? No, them? oh, they're different different albums. Yeah, um, All right, I think what, my guess is what happened is they were pressing so many copies of Meet the exactly. Beatles that they yeah they, they had yeah they had a surplus of somebody else's cover so they just grabbed them pasted or even them not over a surplus and, like fuck know. it we're not put we're putting that out later we want to get the no it was albums there. that weren't selling well and they just yeah. used those yeah, covers that's, yeah. that's a surplus right because yeah. they, they they used to they used to press records based on they would think or calculate try to calculate ahead of time what they were going to need right because that's how you counted sales was by shipped so you had to make them to ship them and then if you shipped them and a bunch of them came back because they weren't selling, you'd have Ship, them sitting somewhere. Remember, there's that old thing in the 70s, ship gold, return platinum. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those interested, our good friend Frank, uh, Mr. Sticker Mania has. And Frank and I are going to be getting together. we got a new month upon us, so Frank and I will be getting together sooner than later. And uh, we, we like to get together on this channel here once a month. We talk about stuff that's available in his store. It's a lot of fun for me because, I, you know, obviously I don't buy everything, but he has so many great items. And, Frank, you're such a good guy. Uh, we're always happy to have you on board. I have a Meet the Beatles paste over it listed on his store right now. You can head over there, check it out. Now, another question is, can we go through the panel? Here, everyone's favorite McCartney album. Oh, Hopefully there will be some variety on this. Uh, so we'll go with Tone Top, and we'll just work around. Tone, who's your favorite uh, McCartney album? What's uh, uh, Venus and Mars for me? Yeah, it's a good album. 1975. It was a good one, Joe. I gotta go with Ram. Ram, yeah, solid. 71, Harry. They're all good. Well, no, I mean they're all good up to a certain point, and then they're shit. But uh, oh, I'm gonna go with Red Rose Speedway. Road to rest, uh, Speedway. <laughs> Today. Could be different tomorrow. Oh, so McCartney, you do flip around a little bit. Rob, do you have a favorite McCartney album? Yes. Number one, there's one favorite he's got. No, the first one. Uh, the, oh, McCartney debut. All right. Yeah. Uh, for me, it, you know, Massey says it's overplayed. I think Joe says the same thing. But And you know what I'm going to say since I say that. Band on the Run was such a huge album. 1973. Massey doesn't like the song Mamonia. I like it. I think there's a lot of clever play with the lyrics in it. You see next time UCLA rain clouds, UCLA. I like stuff like that it's little word. Really, it's, like, it's Chaucer. I, it's an underrated I song. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but it's a, a good solid album. I mean, I don't like every song on it. Uh, the Picasso's only, last it, words. It's Shakespearean. Oh, I like that. I like, I like that. that. I, I love Band on the Run, but I, it's overplayed for me. I, know, I, mean, I hear the answer. I hear that. I'm just saying, if I like an album, you can't overplay it for me. I like it. I like it. George, for you, favorite McCartney album? Well, it's Ram, but I also, pun intended, have a Dark Horse favorite McCartney record, which is sometimes Back to the Egg, because it's uh, so oh, maligned. I tend album. to gravitate towards it. I think I'm it's a stronger album than, yeah, it's it's a great wow. album. When I you, want the picture you, disc of Listen, that. yeah. A lot of people like Back to the Egg. They say it's got a punk sensibility. I like it too. I like it. Eric, do you have a favorite from Paul McCartney album? Well, the first one that I listened to was uh, the Pipes of Peace because it has two yeah. tracks with, with Michael Jackson on it. But it's not. I think my favorite do. one. Uh, I haven't listened to all of them, but uh, I really like Ram. But up to now, it's McCartney too. I really like that one. Oh no! Uh, no! 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 Yes, temporarily. Oh. I think I'll take McCartney two over Red Rose Speedway any day. See, that's what I don't <laughs> like about it is electronic and all that. Yeah, but different strokes, you know. Yeah, different it's strokes. a change. It's different. It's not the same. Okay, old thing. and uh, we will go to uh, Norman Maslow, uh, the legend that I'm is. I'm gonna give you the one. I'm gonna give you a second and third. But one is Ram. Two is Wildlife. Three is Electric Arguments. Yeah, Wildlife gets a lot of thrift with you. I like it as well. Really? I don't wildlife think is a good album. Wildlife yeah. is the one McCartney album, from my point of view, maybe except the first one, that doesn't sound dated today. 
you know he didn't do all that synth i mean it, it's just it's a raw album it's it's i just think it's really great you know uh ricardo kisses on the bottom he just loves it temporary secretary vivian Lund. hi vivian and, and you know nice. what else is you really good by. is um uh flaming pie i agree i know rachel doesn't though i love, love that record and someone was, <laughs> was hating on me for liking that record oh, that's I love that's that's like memory, great I like memory all, almost full too i like I like two songs off of. I like the two hits that came off of. Uh, what what songs, great 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 which song is Jenny that. Wren on? That's is that on memory? Chaos and Creation. Oh, Chaos and Creation. I think, creation, I think uh, yeah. Jenny Wren is the best. The, the best would be the best bad. record song he's written in thirty years. I argue that. Uh, uh, do you know what? House of Wax. wax House of War is good. I love House of Wax. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, that's amazing. That's my that's amazing. favorite from this century. I've I been mean, to that's, Wax's house. That's his best well, rock. The other it. one's the best, like Eleanor Rigby kind of, you know, studio mm -hmm. creation. But I like them both. What, what about Give My Regards to both, Broad you Street? You get opposite sides of McCartney on those two songs. You're, I agree with you. Hey, uh, Harry, you like to sing No More Lonely Nights. To yourself in the shower. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I like the album new. Yes. It's oh, been well. mentioned, Angelo. Thank you. It's fun having so many uh, great, uh, knowledgeable Beatle people up uh, on on screen with us today because uh, they're my favorite band. I'm hey, still. You know. I just picked up two more Beatle albums, like uh, you know, yesterday and or a couple of days ago. And uh, yeah, yesterday was not an album. Yesterday or today? No. Yesterday is a song. Uh, yesterday and today's an old Jose. Great stream yesterday for Johnny Jose back at it. Uh, the reunion and the peace in the valley. I got so much good news. Jason Rowe has him Rob sharing screen, and it was great. Like their their friendship. Is right, you want to you want to know how it went, Rachel? I'll go like this. Okay, let's see how I come up on screen. Yes. Yeah, and then right. someone went like this. Uh oh. We're hoping well, with that. With, we right hope. Ahead. Rachel, we're hoping with that joint detente yesterday yeah. that Jason finally gets his own uh, independent state. All right. Well, I, you know, it seems like, do you think that there's a chance for their friendship to heal? Do you think it was a good moment? I thought it well, was. Great. I don't see that happening, although they're going to meet. I don't know if they're going to talk in Austin. So we'll see. <laughs> what does Rob mean by you people? Rob, sometimes you're seen as kink tankerous. He means non-Jews. He was mad because that's what they called him earlier. He was called uh, you people. Yeah, no, Joe Joe Mayo referred to a genuine just a I people. don't even remember that. I think I did. I was talking about my, you and Mazzy. That's when I went. Two, you know, yes. So, what, so what's the worst McCartney album for everybody? Oh. Driving oh. Rain. Driving, driving rain, pretty bad. Driving, driving rain, rain out of the good. original, out of Paul's original stuff. Otherwise, and pipe the piece. Pipe the piece. Oh, you know, I have a hard time doing these ones. I, you know, or they go, "What's the worst song the Beatles did?" Because I don't like even doing that. They, their worst is better than a lot of people's best that they ever did. No, I think Paul's the worst, worst stuff worst is really Beatles bad. song is "Don't Pass Me By." I like that song. I, I think like it's my, from my taste. I yeah, think Maxwell least... Silverhammer won on uh, Andrew from Parlograms poll. I guess it was Maxwell really? Silverhammer Maxwell? that they voted. No. Yeah, but I it's do. so clever. Rose and Valerie scream from the gallery. Come on. I, I, I don't have a problem with Maxwell at all. I, I like it. I really like oh, it. Think, well, you wouldn't have hey. a problem unless you were recording oh, no. it and you had to do a hundred. Yeah, yeah no, I get I get that they were fed up. Oh, with Mal them. loved yeah. every minute. Uh, McCartney's uh, Indian. I, I Mal, enjoy, give me an anvil. All I, enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy Steve Martin's rendition of Maxwell Silverhammer from oh, yeah. the Sgt. Pepper movie. Oh my God! Mm. All I right, think, I think I have to go, but I think my least favorite Paul McCartney album is uh, McCartney Two, so uh, I have to. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good choice, <laughs> Press. I, 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 I just woke up these days. So, I just I just woke up, so my contribution to the panel was not very uh, <laughs> very no, good. I think, exactly good Fred. I think you did really good, Fred. You're always welcome here. You're better and at two in the morning. You do a great job. Uh, Fred, 
right? Said Fred, it's Fred, folks. He's the audiophile Fidel or something or other. He's got a, one of those names. That <laughs> it's hard to remember the channel name, but there you go. Oh, the thing that surprised me the most in the Mal Evans book was that he contributed lyrics to some of the songs on Sgt. Pepper. He did. And Paul said, you're going to get writing credits. And then when the album yeah. came out, he said, Sorry, Mal, you know, on the Beatles album, it's only John Lennon, Paul McCartney. Yeah. I I had forgotten that he wrote a song that Badfinger recorded. Yeah, I can't no. remember. Oh, he was a, he, yeah, Mal he Evans. was a producer for, he produced the, they, but Mal took, they he gave him Badfinger. It. Mal, go ahead, do something. Yeah, know. that was, and they didn't was pay him very well. Taken away bad, uh, bad he was getting like 68 pounds a week. If something you, that, I mean, you can you can watch Mal helping McCartney write Long and Winding Road in yes. Get Back. You know, you can see him sitting there kind of right. suggesting where to yeah, put but certain words, the and story, McCartney yeah, was listening to him. No, but the takeaway on that is, okay, Mal, I think we kind of get it, Mal. Uh, we're in the middle of the road. We're in the road, Mal, we know. Because Mal's going, well, what about we did? And McCartney's going, yeah, Mal, I don't think it's going to happen. He wrote, he wrote 50-50, Fix It All, and... Uh... Sergeant Pepper, Holy Hearts Club band. Uh, that is criminal. Yeah. That is criminal. If he did that, it doesn't matter. You got to give the guy his credit. Suck it up, Buttercup. And by the way, Jeff Myers, yes. I love Run for Your Life. Just love it. Uh, Run for Your Life. John always gave it. You know, I love it too. It. I think but it's a he great just, song. All he does is he rips the line off of uh, Elvis. Uh, Elvis. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a, it's a well used line. He did the same thing. He got in trouble for it, of course, with the uh, with the mob and roulette. Uh, when he uh, you, you can't catch me uh, from uh, come together. And you know? Jose, I'm not wild about Ebony and Ivory. I don't think it's as bad as you say, but I'm not wild. About it doesn't it. hold Ebony, up over time for me. Ebony and Ivory didn't hold up well, even when it was out. It's too saccharine, and it, 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 the idea is too idealistic, and it lacks. It's the yeah. candy. It's the weakness of Paul. Paul's the candy floss. I would say Paul's Three the... Dog Night did it better with a, a child is black. A child yeah, is yeah, black. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, but McCarty's always said candy floss. And John Lennon's a steel bar that's, you know, when you're at the fair. That's why they were so good. Though. Lennon adds a bite to the Beatles. You got to have it. She was just 17. Look like a beauty queen. Let's trash that line. She's 17. You know what I mean. Not, not yeah, McCartney's told that story about 150 times. And John wouldn't sing, um, uh, what's the song? Please lock me away. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. John yeah. says, oh, we're going to put this in the insane. He didn't like that line. But yeah. how come How come then in I'll Cry Instead, he says, I get myself locked up today? Yeah. I get myself yeah. locked up today, but I can't. So cry instead. That's crazy. Oh, I want yeah, world without love. That was something. John yeah. John said a lot of things uh he in, in retrospect, time, thinking yeah. back about the Beatles, and he yeah, said a sure. lot of that that was his whole thing, was he just said things off the top of his head that <laughs> oftentimes got him into trouble and everybody yeah. kind of knew, well, that's John, you know. But that's yeah. that's part of the charm and that's part of the appeal. I mean, like he said, I just said it and I was all this, you know, the the infamous uh, you know well, Henry, Henry is right, you know. Lennon was like the meat, the meat, but Paul is the one. If it wasn't for Paul, we there's a lot of Beatles stuff we wouldn't have today. Sure. Oh, completely. Yeah, completely. Well, John, I mean, Lennon got tired of the Beatles train pretty quick and was happy to sit on their laurels, and Paul was there. Come on, let's get back to yeah, it. Yeah, you got to grow up Most of the A-sides in the first half were John's and in the second half were Paul's, you know, with some exceptions. Johnny L, I really like Let Me Roll It Up and On The Run Now. The thing with that, McCartney denies it's Lennon. Give me a break. That is totally Paul McCartney impersonating John Lennon. I said it when I first started it in 73. I go, holy crap. Yeah, I, I don't get that myself. I don't explain it to me. And because of the stark drumming, the syncopated bump. But it's right out. You could have put dropped that right on plastic on a bump. And, 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 and melodically... Uh, the over over use of echo as well. Yeah, Re and that, reverb because Paul didn't. And use then also after he really goes, let me really goes. Oh, 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 oh. If it, also <laughs> if you go if you go if you if you, if you if you go back and you look at writing styles, you would see that McCartney would do a complex chord progression or a simple chord progression, 
but have a complex melody line going over top of it. That was McCartney's thing. Lennon would actually have a very simple melody line lyrically going over uh, over a chord change. You know, I am he as you are me. You know that that kind of simpler melody that wasn't too all over the place. And if you look at Let Me Roll It, that's Paul sort of reeling in. You gave me something I understand. And then having that sort of slow trotting thing with it's the echo really on it, sharp. it was him doing like a Lennon pastiche from the yeah. early solo records. And he, I don't think he was doing it other than to say, let's let's stop being assholes yeah, but did to he each ever, other. I, I agree. It certainly sounds like I've always thought it sounded Lennon-ish. But did he ever confirm that, Paul? No, oh, he did not. Paul did, yeah. He no, he did. And he how is two legs a dig? Explain that one. My dog got. Uh, um, dog is here. Dog is there. Most dogs, they got three legs. But I can't remember. Isn't that supposed to be about John somehow? I think well, uh, it was a sort you're of a uh, Yoko, I guess. I think the three legs refers to the, the three Beatles that were in the Klein camp. Oh, right. Yeah. Paul, okay. Paul George and Ringer. Pose on his own. He's the he's the odd leg. Oh, no, no, I, yeah. I like that John told Mal later that when they fired uh, Klein, he said, "What happened?" John says, eh, "Well, maybe Paul was right." Okay. They could also yeah. uh, Henry. I believe the Beatles. John could do ballads, gentle, <laughs> sweet, sentimental ballads. Paul could do them too. They were both geniuses. There's no two ways about it. It's 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 fascinating to look at the uh, you know what they wrote how they wrote it there's an interesting documentary it's absolutely must reading for any beetle or must viewing for any beetle fan it's called the beatles of musical appreciation the he, the the author of the or the mm -hmm. you know the voice of it is a musicologist so that may be a strike against him on some level he goes there are three chord changes and i saw her standing there in, in the first eight stances of i am the walrus which we were just just discussing, there's 16 chord ch chord changes. The complexity of the music as you go from the one to the other, 16 chord changes within the first eight bars of uh, "I Am the Wall." Right, and that's what I meant. Is that, but if you look at the melody line, it's only two to three notes most of yeah. the time, and that was Lennon's coolness. Was that he could keep the he 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 did the opposite. He he pedaled on the the vocal while letting the music change around it, and that was almost yeah. his you know innate style. Well, and part of the inspiration because we, we so much has been written. We do know George, as you're aware. Like uh, you know, we know John was saying, "Oh, I t I listened to an ambulance." Of course, in England, they sound different than they do over here, where ours scream, but they have that. <laughs> that's the UK kind of sound, and so do 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 do. I am the. <laughs> You know, it's Rachel, 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 Rachel. Yeah. You yeah. said doo doo. Did I say doo doo? I, I think well, we're boring Mazzy with all this Beatle talk. No, yeah. Mazzy's more into his own world of CNN. How, what's you happening? Know, I'm, 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 resp I'm responding to some emails. And text all right. Emails. Have you got any hate emails, Mazzy? Um, not lately. Okay, I know the quote, Ringo isn't the best drummer in the Beatles, is a fake comment, but is it actually true? Paul did it's the John's back on you, sir. It was it just as good as Ringo. Makes you think, you know. It doesn't make me... He's think. okay, but he's no Ringo. No, he's better, not as good as Ringo. Ringo is an excellent drummer. Ringo's yeah. one of the best drummers of all time. If you, How many number one hits did any other drummer play on compared boy, to Ringo? Boy, it's boy. not a mistake. No, you know? not even that, but you, go to, you, you speak to any, any drummer, and they will they will say Ringo is one of their... Jim Keltner. influences, is one of their favorite... You know, favorite drummers. You know, I love you'll say they, they can't uh, even drummers that are a lot better than Ringo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it, it wasn't about Flash with Ringo. It wasn't about fills and solos. Right. But when he did do them, the, the the feel that Ringo had for the song oftentimes made the song yeah. better. He contributed just as much yeah. as anybody else. Exactly. In, in that. Exactly. That. I picked up uh, I picked up Jenny Lewis album uh, uh, "Hold the Line." And she's got a song called Heads Will Roll. Ringo drums on it. Very simple drumming, but so freaking powerful. And Jim Keltner's on it, too. When you hear yeah, Jim Keltner plays on a couple of the other songs. But Ringo on the Heads Will Roll, when those drums hit with the modern production on them, you go, holy shit, does that sound good. And it's Ringo, man. And also, you listen to Tomorrow Never Knows, Strawberry Fields Forever. 
the drum song. Remember, we were listening to the I think it was the UK First Press on that, yeah. and you hear these those drums of Ringo went on the outro on that down 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 his drumming is so powerful on that unbelievable uh Ringo's an incredible drummer and I love his drumming even the simplicity of the Sergeant Pepper reprise one two three four driving that why do we need why do we need drum machines when we have Rachel Spot on. Exactly. Oh, Ringo's. The, I'll challenge you. Ringo's a better actor than drummer. Have you ever seen the movie Blind Man? Spaghetti Western. No, but if you but yeah. two two movies he was fantastic in, um, uh, the Magic Christian and Cave, That'll Cave Be the Man. Day. Okay, that'll Man. be the day. Well, Caveman's okay, but I mean that'll be the day he was great in with uh, uh, David. His best. That's his probably his best. Two yeah, different. David, David, I, this yeah. is another thing I don't like getting into. Who's who's better than who? You know, I, Charlie I, I Watch is more of a jazz drummer. He's a and jazz Ringo drummer. Ringo was more inventive and stylistic uh, yeah. in, in in accord to the songs that he was. Ringo's trying to play. the better rock hey. drummer. I, th I oh, would hold on. <laughs> Charlie Watts is better at being dead than Ringo. Jeez. Um. <laughs> anyway, it's true. I mean, it's but, true. But, you listen to those Beatles songs. I think George made a great comment when he says, listen, how many songs was he on? If you like the Beatles, you got to like Ringo because Ringo's the drums for 99% of the Beatles songs. Paul drummed on a couple of them. Ringo had a, a certain style. Paul Ringo was said he could never do a, a like a snare roll, you know, that... A shuffle. He couldn't play a shuffle. Yeah, Paul that was the thing, yeah. Uh George Harrison, Mr. Sticker Man, Frank knows the thing or two. Harrison hated the original compressed USA mix of the White Album. He went to Capitol in L.A. to remaster it. You know, so, I, li I, li I do like Paul on, on, on Ballad John and Yoko and USSR, but it's not that it's so great. It's just maybe because we're used different. to it. There's a certain just something about it that's just fun. Got a good it. rock sound to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's He's good on Band on the Run, the album. He yeah. Plays drums yeah. On Band on but the, the run. bass, the bass run on, on Ballad of Joko, Johnny Yoko, I mean, that's what, that's the hook. That's what drives the song. It's a bass driven the, the song. The bass and the drums. Yeah. Well, General. yeah, it was a different, the way that the bass and the drums lock on that because it's both Paul, you know, that's, it's, yeah. it's like, look, Paul, the bad, the, 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 the come and get it demo. Uh, for mm -hmm. that he gave to Badfinger. If you listen to that demo, it's and he and he just he just comes in, he knocks that off. He played, he knew everything he was gonna do, and he played it all, and it was already note perfect. Could have released that as a song himself. Instead, he, he told gives it to them if you want to copy hit, this track, record for track. it exactly yeah. like I. You did. know, pa Paul uh, Ballad of John Yoko is something that could have been like a really dumb song, and Paul added something to it that made it even special. I mean, it, 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 it it's almost cliche. You know, John was going through his cliche period, which I like. I love Instant Karma, and I I like Power to the People, but they're kind of the cliche shit. He was peace and give peace a chance. All three cliches. Um, I think. Um, uh, the, the one in the middle there. Um, uh, All you need you know, is uh, love. Another cliche. Instant karma to me is the best of the three, and I just like that concept. Where record, you know, master and get it out in a week and press it in a week or something. He I wanted think, he uh, wanted to record Cold Turkey as a Beatles song, and George said no. <laughs> that yeah, been a I, great I, like, I like the fact that the Beatles were uh, uh, kind of a a I don't know a consortium of opinion on things. They couldn't just. Uh, do things uh, nilly willy. Hang on, Belt Loop. I'll give you a wrench. So don't time him out. It's Belt Loop. He's our friend. He's just got different ac um, accounts. Uh, let me do this. Uh, but I love uh, like uh, the drumming on Revolution is great. Ringo knew timing and space, so he he takes advantage. And when and when that sound there's that pause. When you think the sound's going to come through, there's slight pause, and then it comes in. It's beautiful stuff. I Just think his, some of his best drumming is on the song Rain. Rain is another so great. He almost signals, signals that as his best favorite drum yeah. uh, what, what, what was, was that, Joe? Yeah, it was, it, he always mentioned his Rain as his the favorite blue album. performance. Okay. Well, Beatles tone, Paul's bass is absolutely yeah, another Another technical aspect to contemplate with Rain is that they had played that song originally in the studio faster. Then you hear it 
And to have it slowed down is when you usually see the weakness of a drummer. But with Ringo, you saw a complete genius uh, playing. And it's hard to be a, a musician, play something at a certain speed, have it slowed down and still have it be accurate and listenable. And Ringo in Rain is playing some of his most awesome stuff and it's already slowed down. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. George, you're a, a phrasing up a little bit there. I uh, got to go. I'll listen off while you're ending. Well, it off. There's not much yeah. more to listen. I was just going to think what I think we've had a good long show. Three oh, hours. Eight minutes. Nine o'clock. I, I didn't really mean to. I didn't mean to end the party. No, you weren't. I was on. You don't spoil want to spoil the party, party, so I go. Ladies and gentlemen, please consider subscribing to Beatley Tone. Uh, first time appearance on the show. Don't be afraid. Thanks for having me on. Come, come by again. We'll do a, another. There's nothing episode. for me here, so oh, I God. will disappear. All right, Harry. I, like Black, I just really, all I want to do is just have me and the two Georges on. Because I think Thanks. that would a good luck. George, do you agree with George? I think I, I, I'm trying, but I keep getting kicked out. <laughs> I tell you that George hey, had a good hey, point earlier in the I program. The George above here looks like he's holding in a fart, Rachel. <laughs> I love this comment. Please subscribe to Joe Mayo. He's Thanks, a good Patrick. Channel. <laughs> yeah, no, Joe, your channel's premier, man. We love you here. And uh, thanks for coming over. We always, uh, it's a decided pleasure to have you on. George as well, uh, uh, you bring a lot of knowledge to the table. Uh, you are a working producer. You've got a, an amazing resume. I'd love to see some of your vinyl and get, you know, put that in my collection of stuff. It'd be kind of fun. Uh, and anyway, Tom, don't be a stranger. Come by again. Uh, same always, Joe. I know you're busy. You're a busy man. When's the next live stream for you, Joe? Oh, me, guy, all the time. <laughs> Your cat yeah, no. he's out there any given time. And uh, Tone, do you have a regularly scheduled live stream, or is it? I don't. I just do. I just do it yeah. when I when I feel like it, or when That's there's something right. something to t to talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do do them from time to time. Well, bless you. I'm a fan, and I'm glad you're here. I'm really thrilled. Great panel today, Rob. You got a stream going today? It's Tuesday. Um. It depends how I have a lunch to go to. So either tonight or tomorrow. So Campbell, we love you. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'll change the name to something more Beatley. We'll put Beatley Tone in the title. How about that? Hey, Rachel, before <laughs> before we yeah. shut down, I just want to say the Beatley Tone and Joe Mayo, I, again, uh, you guys do great stuff. It's I, I love watching people talk about the Beatles, and I can do it every day. I know that sometimes in here people get sick of listening to it and you see the chat go crazy about it, but you guys yeah. really do good stuff and I love watching your shows. Thank you Thanks for, so Thanks for being George knowledgeable. For yeah. George and if you're not subscribed to George, please do. Uh, he's one of the best we have. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow, three hours tour. And give us a thumbs up. It means everything. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Woof. Hello, folks. All right. Bye.